Hey everyone, I'm Anthony from Ant Lab Games, and today we're doing a Sunday Crowd Fun Day chat with a whole bunch of friends here. So to go around the table, we have uh, Brandon from All Aboard Gamer. Hey folks. Uh, we have our friend Gary, also known as Fetty Gator. Hey everybody, how's it going? We have Allie, the family meeple. Hi, nice to be here. And we have Carlos from Beans and Dice Podcast. Wepa, let's do this. All right, so we have uh, we have a list of ten games that we're going to hope to get through uh, for this episode that we're going to talk about. These are all crowdfunding games. They all happen to be on Kickstarter tonight, so there was nothing really that popped out on uh, on GameFound this week. But these are games that we collectively sort of brought together, got a list, took the best ten, and we're just going to talk about it for one reason or another, and we'll go through it. So uh, to jump in, we're going to start out with a game called Atlas lost so i will bring that on screen and then we can start talking all right so here we go atlas lost rise of the new sovereigns who here knows about this game or who has been interested in it i have not seen this one until uh today but i was scrolling through wow there's a lot going on is this it's like yeah. a well first of all it looks like it's out of japan right because there's, there's it is definitely yeah uh, i noticed that oh tactical yeah. games yeah yep yeah so there's definitely a lot going on but it, it looks like there's more to it than just tactical warfare right well what i thought was neat about this one first of all they say flat out that it's very much they were inspired by terraforming mars you see it right there yep um civilization beyond the sun i love beyond the sun the problem I have with Beyond the Sun, if there, if it could be called a problem, is that it looks like a spreadsheet. This, if it's like Beyond the Sun, but it has these, you know, this these modular, what they call the modular mechanics, which I think is neat. I, I think there's like five or six of them, and you pick the different mechanisms you want to use for the game, and it changes up the strategy because each mechanism does something different. Um, with all the the meeples and, and all the wooden bit, bits that are in this, if it's something that's a little bit more table presence and it's like Beyond the Sun, I, it, I think I'm very interested in this one. I had never heard of it before today. Yeah. It looks like it even uses the tech trees as well, like uh, Beyond the Sun. Yes. Yeah, so I've never played Civilization. Um, it is based on the Nier series, which for anyone familiar with that, that's actually a video game. It is near automata. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. So that was a uh, pretty interesting. It was like an anime style uh, Japan game, really like like dystopian future type thing. Um, yeah. Post apocalyptic. So I, I guess the it's, art. It's, yeah. The artwork the art is amazing in it. Really yeah. good. Very yeah, so good. I, so that that definitely drew my attention. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's a straight up war game, but I'm telling, you, it doesn't seem that way. It looks. I like don't. I'm not play. seeing the straight up war game feel. I, I know the company's think. called Tactical games but when it starts off with talking about sid meyer's inspired mm -hmm. right, that that 4x feeling is what draws me in more than the beyond the sun terraforming mars piece of it i love the 4x aspects mm -hmm. i like the focus on tech trees in a 4x game which is probably why i didn't love beyond the sun because it didn't give you that 4x civ building piece it just gave you the tech tree right yeah, it was very tech tree. It's tech tree, the board game, really. Yeah, uh, you do have those little planet cards off to the side where you're kind of moving those little ships around, but it's very minor compared to what this looks like. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's like the exploit part of the 4X. That's yeah, because you, you just take those planets and, and you've got it. So um, what about you, Allie? What are your thoughts on this one? I haven't seen this one before now, and usually this wouldn't be the type of game that would necessarily catch my attention but as we're scrolling through and looking at it the wooden meeples that are screen printed look mm -hmm. awesome oh, yeah. and it definitely seems like it's more in kind of the euro style game than what i would have initially thought just looking at the cover um and it does include solo so that's intriguing as well anytime a campaign includes solo play mm. it catches my interest a bit more the artwork yeah. looks great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the solo mode was unlocked. It's called the Metis, and it's like yeah. an AI. So, yeah. Allie, you are kind of the, the solo. I don't know if, if anybody else is really high solo, but you are pretty much here. You just did a, a video with Gizmo about solo. Mm -hmm. um, do you like, do you prefer solo games that sort of beat your own score, or do you like something like this where you're going up against an AI, or do you like a mix? 
I, I tend to prefer the Automa style where you have mm-hmm. someone who's in there kind of acting as that second player, you know, changing the game state and um, giving you a score to compete against. But I'll play both. I mean, some of my favorite ones have beat your own score. Mm. Those are fun too. Another thing I see. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to. Another thing I see that's really interesting is 40 to 90 minute playtime. Yeah. Wow. That's. (laughs) I I was like, I just saw that. Pretty short. There's a lot going on. And like, whoa, that's that's interesting. That that does not compute. That make no sense. You know, when I look, when I scroll through this thing and see all the, the components. That don't make no sense. No, it's going to take me more than 40 minutes to set this up. <laughs> is it 40 to 90 per player? <laughs> oh, that's oh, that per, uh, Yeah, if it's per player, that's a, that's a different issue altogether. Yeah, that's... solo, I guess, 40 to 90. And yeah. that, that was going to take me to my next point on this is looking at, and Ali was right, the screen meeples, the screen printed meeples are gorgeous, right? Yeah, but as you yeah. go through all the components in the game, I start to get a little overwhelmed. Does anybody else feel that? Like, yes. oh, man, I, yeah. I can imagine just the setup alone is going to oh, yeah. burn a lot of energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does Absolutely. it say it comes with an insert of any sort? It, I don't know. Not that I saw. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. That's a, that's a great point, though. I wish, like, I don't think enough publishers advertise that as, as, mm-hmm. a, as a plus, because I just think back to, like, the original Terraforming Mars, if you, if you all remember that, when, when you open that box and you punch it you play it, you go to put it back and it's literally just lay everything and the, and the actual inserts like just, just a cardboard fold yeah it's just it, there's no purpose to it so nothing really fit it's just yep. stuff in box put the lid on it i think it's it's the worst way to store a game so whenever i see a new game now that comes out and we get it and it's got all these like nice little separators uh like the the moonraker's big box when you got that that thing was just it had a cutout for every single component every shit in that in that game T- and take it back things. 15 years ago, Lords of Waterdeep. I mean, the the insert alone in there should have been a model for the rest of the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ali, I want to ask about the solo aspects of this, right? Do you worry that a game like this would be less of an Automa, nice and simple, flip a card, do a thing? Or do you think it'll be more of like a David Tursky, you know, flow chart, if this, then this, kind of a burn your brain? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know because I I didn't look at it before now and so i i'm not sure i've kind of played both um i tend to like the flip a card version better Mm. than having to go and look up a whole bunch of if then statements to decide what the automa does so somewhere in between like beat your own score just play solo and see how well you do and the you know what i kind of think of with like the Big Bang Theory where he brought that 4X game with 18X game, whatever it was out, where he was reading through all the rules and it was like this chart. And I was like, somewhere in between there is what usually where mm. I like to be at. So Automa Factory style is my preference most of the time. I can't tell on that one, but it looked like it was a deck of cards. So likely it would be more simplistic. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Um, I played recently Undaunted solo, right? And it's designed mm-hmm. by Turchi, and it's it's a uh, it's basically an AI. So you, have, but I, I, as much as that is the most probably fulfilling experience you have as solo. For me, I feel like it's I'm almost playing two games: one interpreting mm-hmm. his flowchart of of rules and and making decisions for the Automa based on his logic, um, mm-hmm. and then having to think about my own strategy after that. So it's like, by the time I get halfway through a game, I'm like, I'm already fried because I've played two completely different games and it's almost too much. I almost would rather there be some sort of like luck component, like um, uh, Race for the Galaxy had one where they had a die you would roll and a bot would do certain things depending mm-hmm. on what you were playing and what planets it had. And it was just really smart and easy. And I think that's that's sort of like the blend I like to see. And I think that's where the trap is on this one. We look at the, the unlock solo rules, right? It says 25 cards. Yeah. I mean, when I look at all these components in this game, you're going to use 25 cards and run a full AI system. You know, I mean, uh, uh, Caesar, right? Hail Caesar or uh, Caesar exclamation point, excuse me. The the small box war game, two player war game. It oh, only yeah. uses like yeah. six cards to play the AI, but it is a series of if then statements mm-hmm. that just burn my brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel too, like it's... I feel like this might be a trap on the solo side. Yeah, so that's <laughs> you know, solo's good, but 
it, it, to, to the point is what what level of solo is it right is it just because yeah. there's the, always like you said to beat your own score but i always always got a little bit disappointed when i go to the back of the book and the solo rules say hey here's the different tiers and this is what your your new title is if you get this score and i'm like eh, i kind of want to feel like i'm fighting yeah. against somebody you know I just yeah. recently played uh, In Too Deep from Burnt Island Games, and I played it solo uh, for the first time. I haven't even played it multiplayer. I don't know if you've heard of that when it was kickstarted. We picked up a Kickstarter copy at random. It was just at the store, and I really liked it because you're going up against this AI. I forget what she's called now, but it's a cyberpunk type of game, hmm. and it was extremely fulfilling because I was going up against another opponent, and the way that it worked was was very well done it wasn't just a deck of cards there was like a see i don't mind that like i like playing anachrony solo and that's david turchy all over it and but it works right um that's a complex game already but um yeah this one i i i do agree because the other thing is it's like they unlocked solo mode so hopefully it's not just like mm -hmm. tacked on you know that kind mm -hmm. of thing just not tacked on but yeah when yeah. there's an when there's an in-depth solo experience i don't mind doing that but i don't want like aquatica i tried that solo oh it's just it's beat your own score beat your <laughs> exactly. own score i hate that i'm sorry i just i'm telling you right that's part of the reason i don't play a lot of solos a lot of solos oh you're at this tier you're you have this title just like you just said anthony and i just yeah. that makes me cringe I yeah like that. i i saw that when i set that up uh, one day we were gonna play and i was like oh let me learn the game yeah. and part of yeah. learning games i i just solo it real quick so that mm -hmm. when, when we go to play two player it's easier to learn yep. Um, and then I'm like, ah, oh, spew my own score. I'm like, forget it. Like yeah, it and I love Aquatic. I think Aquatic is a great game. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the solo is just not, not fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I think beat your own score is better the lighter the game. Agreed. So, like okay. yeah. the Agreed. pencil yeah. first games yeah. are mm -hmm. all basically beat your own score. But you're looking at if you're playing Herbaceous solo, it's 10 minutes. It's 15 yeah. minutes. It's just, right. you know, kind of see how the cards come out. It feels much more like like Klondike Solitaire, where you're just kind yeah. of playing and it's a relaxing, you're you know, on a lunch break or something. But if you're going to pull out a heavy Euro game for solo, you kind of are expecting that meteor yeah. experience. 100%. Yeah. Sure. 100%. By the All way, right, the, so art, the artwork is awesome in this. If, if there's yeah. one game on this list, in this whole list, that pull, the artwork pulls me into the world, it's this yeah. one. That's all I'm going to say. It's at the bottom by the shipping. If you haven't so, seen it, it's really good. What I like to do after we talk about each of these campaigns is to just go around real quick and just give a, a yay or nay on whether or not all things aside, cost, uh, anything else, would you back this? Like if it was, or would you, would you go for it? Like, is this something you'd back? Not that you did or you, you didn't, but would you do it? Just hypothetically. So now we have Francis on. So I guess. I feel, and I, have to feel, I feel like I have to up my game next time we do this because my studio is like, I need to put the blur background on. Everybody's uh, like, <laughs> their game's looking great. I'm like, <laughs> so, well, I could put the uh, green screen behind you. We could just put whatever background you want. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think? Um. Yeah, I would go for this one. I know I wasn't part of the discussion, but this was one that uh that I was looking like I was into. Um. I don't know. I'm into tech trees right now. Yeah, cool, Brandon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This yeah. is. I think this is going to be my kind of game. Sweet, Allie. Uh, I'm on the fence on this one. I think I would lean towards no, but would play if someone else had it. Yeah. Cool. Carlos. I'm out. Uh, my I'm anxieties out. are <laughs> kicking in. When I look at all the component tree, the tracks, the the modularity of it, right? It, it sounds exciting, but yeah. that's just going to be a bunch of decisions I have to make. This is why I wear this shirt, because I put it on for every show. It's one less decision I have to make. Uh, and Gary, what, is your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like it, but I'm going to go nay on this one. I just can't okay. see myself pulling it out. But that price point's really nice, I would say, with all that you get on that. Yeah. 88 bucks, pretty good. Yeah, or 85,000 yen. Yeah, Six, yen. 60, 64, $64 if you don't want the expansion. If you just want the core box, 64 yeah. and I think it's 16 shipping to that the US. Not that's better. not bad. Yeah. That is not bad. That's real good. All. Yep. Yeah, people still sell games for less than a hundred bucks. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're past that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll uh, we'll jump to the next game here. I think now that Francis joined us, we're gonna go and do Weimar. Nice. Okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> all right. So Weimar or Vi Weimar? Is it Vi Weimar? Weimar. 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 English Weimar. is also Weimar. not your first language. <laughs> no. Yeah. 
the fun. Well, I don't know if it's English. It's like it's what is it's it? German. 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 Yeah. German. Yeah. German. <laughs> the fight for democracy. So I know absolutely nothing about this game. So I'm going to turn this over to anybody who knows anything <laughs> about this game. <laughs> did anybody? Uh, did anybody else take a look at this one? I yeah, did. it has it has high quality cardboard components. <laughs> <laughs> Oh that's my a, goodness. That's a plus in my to, book. I'm, uh, I'm actually trying to pull up my Kickstarter. Well, I, we were talking about this earlier, right? Yeah. And we, were, we were looking at a couple of indicators here, right? So Matthias Kramer, right? And yeah. uh, Brandon, you were able to look up a bunch of stuff, right? So rattle the yeah. list of games that this 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 gentleman's. Oh, Matthias <laughs> Glenmore. I mean, Allie's on. I know she's trying to interrupt me yeah. and say it. Say it, uh -huh. Allie. Allie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Coco when I was scrolling too. through. Yeah. yeah, when I was scrolling through the Kickstarter page, what caught my eye was Matthias Kramer right. on the designer because he's a designer of Glenmore 2 Chronicles, which is my favorite game. Yes. And Rococo, um, yep. Rococo Deluxe Edition. He did Watergate. Um, yes. And then he just, from what I've seen, he kind of does these like Euro games that are right in my sweet spot, Rococo and Glenmore. And then he does these war games where I'm just like, I'm out because... I don't that theme doesn't do it for me yeah so when I opened it up and I was like oh it's one of that side I was like eh, I don't know but. see and what's funny is like when I was looking through this because and I'll be honest I when I was going through Kickstarter and I've gone through the list several times I look I overlooked this one several times just just based mm -hmm. on the cover to be honest with you and I was like don't know that word looks kind of dull <laughs> <laughs> reading on uh, but actually but i you know i did uh i went on and looked and i saw it was matthias kramer too and uh but it actually looks more it looks more uh euro -y to me it looks more like a um like almost like an influence type of game and of course i don't know it was like, obviously we didn't get it but it looks like it reminded me a little more of like a almost like a twilight struggle or almost like a watergate mm -hmm. in a way where I, I wouldn't consider it necessarily like a war game but um yeah. definitely like a political influence uh with some with the, you know a lot, a lot of uh, kind of like Euro mechanics, um, mm. I'm looking it's through here, and I know you're like you're you're managing your party, um, and you're if, from what I understand, you're managing what's going on in your political party, but you're also managing like those streets. Uh, so you want to do social objectives that align with your party, and then um, it's kind of a um, a kind of a struggle to the end of the game to see which uh, not faction, but more or less. Uh, faction wins i guess yeah it's definitely an influence game yeah. he actually, actually recommends you play with four players i was going to do more reading okay and, and it's a five to six hour game <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah this is a because <laughs> if you look right there, there. Yeah. 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 160 <laughs> minutes yeah it's twilight imperium in the weimar <laughs> um <laughs> yeah but yeah that, it, it, it it's it's it is like that influence thing. So you're yeah. going to each be at one of those four major parties and you're going to have cards. You're going to be playing them almost like Watergate or yeah. um, uh, 13 days if you've ever played that. But that's not Kramer, but that's, you know, kind of similar. And because you got this like little opinion influence uh, chart. You're, yeah, you're can moving you your scroll down to that? Around. Yeah. The, uh, the public opinion board. Yeah, there's a public, going. yeah, with this like grid. Yeah. And it's usually have the like ones a, you uh, find from uh, GMT games. Like so they call them CDGs right. or yeah. card-driven yeah. games. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Yeah. up. No, Very go much up, that go up a little bit. Go up a little bit. One more. That's the streets. One more. Yeah, right there. That one. All right. But it, it's no like longer like a, a yeah. tug of war for influence. It looks like a XY access. Yeah. You know, so, uh, almost yeah. like Founding Fathers. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Founding Fathers. Yes. No. Uh, you're playing not just different political factions, right? So it's not just polar opposites, but also there, there's like four types of influence. You could be states' rights or federal rights, right? Or, uh, uh, you know, different types of influences you're trying to make happen more on a quadrant than right. a linear pool. Well, it reminds, it reminds me, going back to like my, you know, political, um, I don't know, political science degree, which I never use. Um, it's kind of <laughs> like you have like your conservative and then your like liberal parties, but then you also have this other continuum, which is more like, like social issues and stuff. So you can have like the, like, you know, socially 
progressive and fiscally progressive, and then you can have right. the socially conservative, fiscally progressive, or anywhere on the continuum. It's not just uh, polarized. It's not just black and white. It's exactly. a quadrant. It's yeah. a quadrant. Yeah. So that's kind of what I what I was understanding. This well, if you haven't used that degree in a while, you get three to four hours to get okay, to do it here. Three to four yeah, hours. Could, absolutely. I, could, nope. I might be able to own this. Game. I, I have to find her three other people to play it with. Yeah. yeah. Possible. <laughs> there are literally five different end game conditions too. If you oh, look wow. down further, yeah, um, and they're they're pretty beefy. So there's definitely multiple ways. Yeah. This will be this would be heavily strategic. You yeah. talk about components. I think this one makes Atlas Lost <laughs> look like a baby <laughs> with components because yeah. this one has tons of components. I mean, lots of stuff. Yeah, uh, lots yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. I don't know, guys. I I either I'm in a mood or something. I just think. It looks like such a meaty challenge that, and it's it's gorgeous. It, like I think it, that the way it's presented is really nice too. I like the art and everything. Yeah, here's your um, I would yeah. I would look at this for three hours and I would be fine with it. I would take this rule book out, read it for three hours, and then put it away. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'll never play this <laughs> game because I, I won't find anybody that'll ever want to play. It, with it would be one of those. I can't tell you how many times I've done that where I've read the rules and then I'm like, yeah, yeah <laughs> put that away for now. We'll come back some other. So let's time. talk about the cost. This is the first campaign that i have ever seen that uh -huh. includes the cost of shipping in the price of the game so you look at the cost it's 126 dollars us okay but it includes the shipping but they don't tell oh. you what the shipping is they just say that you're we're never going to charge you more for shipping like that's mm -hmm. the one thing anthony and i talked about in the last video that we did talked a lot about the shipping problem the crisis is right. this the solution or or do you think uh, how do how do you cuz 126 dollars looks like a high price tag. Yeah. You tell you tell someone uh, that it's 80 bucks but you're going to yeah. charge them 30 shipping. Psychologically like is that is that less of a hit or do you just lump it all together and say we're going to like no increase no, in shipping it's the this Amazon the thing. This is yeah. the Amazon Prime model which mm -hmm. is I'm going to sell you this this board game for mm -hmm. 50 bucks shipped to your house no questions asked. But yep. if I went to the website of the publisher I can find it mm -hmm. for like 30 bucks and then kind of figure out the shipping ends up being similar to Mm -hmm. Right, ends yeah. up being fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I would rather buy it on Amazon because it says fifty bucks, no questions asked. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess they're they're trying to gamble in that they they bake it in the price of the game. That way, if they get cheaper shipping, they make out. They probably build a nice buffer in there. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, without having to fully disclose where what they're actually paying for shipping, but I. But it also includes the EU VAT thing. So are we yeah, here cool. in a, a non-VAT, yeah, yeah. are we in a non-VAT country paying for paying VAT? For it. it looks well, like we are, if you're, probably. If you're going to back yeah. it, I guess. Yeah, so right there, like that to me is like, I don't know about that. Yeah, 126 bucks is a lot of money. This game looks good. Yeah, you're getting a five, six hour experience, but it's I'd still say, 126 bucks. I'd say, yeah. I know I'm probably jumping the gun because we're going to ask if anybody would back this, but I, I would probably not back this because I already know it's going to be published by Capstone. I'm, I know I'm going to be able to pick it up. I don't have the time to play it right now, so I don't need to be mm. the first to get it, to be honest. <laughs> Will we ever that have that kind of time? We, we probably won't ever have that. Like we still have coffee traders sitting there. So, yeah. <laughs> if I come but, to visit, uh, you would. Hey, uh, we, I would, we would make the time. For yep. anyone. Yes, we absolutely would. Um, but uh, it probably won't be one that I would back. Um, yeah. But I, I would, um, I would probably and probably will pick this up once it comes out. All right. So now that we have her opinion, we might yeah. well go around and get everybody else's opinion. So, um, where do we want to go? Let's go to Brandon. Yeah, this would be a, a pass for me right now, especially if Capstone is going to publish it. It'll likely be less. I actually have that Capstone, that little club that they have. Yeah. So um, that would be a better value for me if I were going to take a look at a game this size. But this is not something that Lexi and I, I think, would play two player. This would be something for, I think, multiple people. I think, just mm -hmm. think it would be more fun that way with the different factions and the politics and all that in there. So I would say at this point, it's a pass. Hmm. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, when Capstone publishes it. All right, Allie. Yeah, this one's a pass for me. The player count combined with the time, I don't know when I would ever play it. So. <laughs> Designer aside, I mean, yeah. that's I'll just play mm -hmm. Glamour too. It's fine. No. <laughs> good, good point, Carlos. I think this is it, it's going to be a pass right up front. But this is the kind of game that I would see at the historical gaming conventions that I go to, because that's oh. you know, where I started mm -hmm. my love of gaming, uh, like Huracan here in Florida, oh. Recon. 
Uh, this would be that event game, right, that we okay. usually see at one table. Somebody schedules it months in advance. It is four player only, I think. I don't think this That's is what it said. Yeah. It oh, it is. Right. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to find three friends and, and yeah. they got to know. Who oh, yeah. So for me, I'm not going to find those friends, probably because most of my friends aren't really loving this whole 1918 Germany's theme. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's very specific. It's like, yeah. hey, it's not World War Two yet. But do you want to play about <laughs> Germany pre World War Two? No, yeah. no, I don't. That's kind of so. weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, Gary. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a pass for me. I want to play this game. I dig ah, it. I love the history it. part of it. I, I mean, it's just right up my alley. I love all this sort of stuff. I wish somebody would make an American version of this. Like in the mid-1800s when you had, like, Whigs and Federalists yeah. still and Republicans. I mean, they were all no, doing the same thing. Founding Fathers. Around. I mean, that would right? be Founding awesome. Fathers. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's the game. Yeah. 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 Look it up, Gary. Founding Fathers. That, that's exactly what this is. Car driven. Oh, no, I know. It, I know that game. I haven't played it though. I'd love to play it though. <laughs> well, you know what? When you come to a historical convention in Florida, I'll be there. Founding Fathers even, will go. I'll All right. be honest with you. I didn't even know they had historical gaming conventions. I didn't and either. Now I feel like <laughs> I need to go to one. Yeah. Wow. I'm such a history uh, buff. I just love it. This would be oh, a yeah, con. This one. would be a game for a, a con. A good con though. game. Yeah. yeah, for sure, yeah. I think yeah. if we had that much out that that many hours though, I would rather play like Twilight Imperium. Like four or five other games. Um, right. <laughs> I will mention there's one thing about this I do want to highlight that I, I appreciate. So Anthony, can you go back to the Kickstarter page and just scroll all the way down to versions and partners? Versions and partners. Yes. Interesting. All right, bear with me. Because this is I have to point this out for anybody who might appreciate this kind of stuff too. Cause this is a, a pretty heavy game. So these kind How of How far are we going? Before um keep going down oh, there you go, go. right there okay. yeah so if you look at the on the uh english version of the game it says capsule games will, will provide the english version of the game the rule book will be edited by jonathan jonathan bobal who i don't know who has a strong technical editing background and also has a master's degree in education and psychology and learning motivation degree i appreciate this so much because i think that a lot of these um, heavier games they don't get um, they kind of just get a translation of the rules and that's it. Mm -hmm. And they call it a day. And that makes, they makes these kinds of games really difficult to enjoy because like Anthony said, you spend so much time with the rule book learning the game. So, um, I don't know this fellow, um, but I appreciate that they got somebody with that kind of background <laughs> to do the, uh, to do the rule book. So I just but he's got, the, he's got the credentials. Sounds like it. So it must be good. All right. Well, let's go on to, let's see what's next in the, uh, oh, Legacy of you. I think we'll cover that one next. <laughs> Not the legacy of me. No. It's you <laughs> with <Hawaii>. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was wondering which one I thought it was going to be Gary. I got to be honest. I have <laughs> <my own Gary. laughs> <Give me some laughs> credit. <laughs> you mean the legacy of me? Because it's always about Gary. <laughs> uh, no, I can maybe uh, talk a little bit. I know other people have probably looked at this one. I'm actually not backing this one yet because it's solo only. So we go from mm. four well, player we know only. You're a, you're a Shem Phillips fan. Just I am. Begin with. Right? I am. So let, and by the way, a lot of people, out there. Right. And a lot of people don't know this, but his brother Sam is the one who's doing the art for this antiquity series. Um, because a lot of people are bashing the art. Like I've noticed that people are, and I don't think people know that it's his brother Sam. It's Sam Phillips. Um, oh. and I not that that should save him from criticism. What I'm saying is it is his brother, and I think his style has really improved over time um with circadians and chaos order. So this one's in the antiquities line. Um, it's solo only. And it looks to be like a little campaign driven kind of solo game. I'm actually interested in this one, but I haven't backed it yet. And it's only on Kickstarter for like 10 days total. There's like four days left, but it's it's going gangbusters. I mean it's it's Garfield Games, it's Shem Phillips, the art, I love the cover by the way. The cover is amazing. Um, but this one, you're trying to keep the Yellow River, <clears throat> I think, from uh, from flooding. <laughs> and that's basically what you're doing. And you're defending your village as it's growing from the barbarians that invade. So it has a little bit of that Hadrian's Wall feel yeah, where you have the, the uh, yeah, you have that attacking mm -hmm. force. This one just looks a little bit more. I don't want to say streamlined, but Hadrian's Wall is like two pieces of paper filled with just the ittiest, bittiest, like where's Waldo type of iconography. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This looks more like a straight up game. I don't know. The iconography and, and the components, um, it looks really good. I don't know. Did anyone else take a look at this one and, and see if, I mean, I know Ali's kind of the resident person we're talking to about solo, but this one being solo only, is this interesting to anybody? 
Yeah, I'd be interested to see what Ali, what you think of this one, especially because because you're like, I would replay and replay and replay. Would this be one at 60 minutes that you would replay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I honestly haven't looked at this one too closely. I tend not to look at the Garfield Games games. Full disclosure, I haven't played mm -hmm. any of the games yet. Um, I've mm -hmm. played Raiders on the app and I've played um, Noctiluca from Shem Phillips. But because all of their games come to retail, mm. I've always just kind of waited. Mm. Um, so even with like the most recent one, Wayfarers, um, mm. I just right. decided to wait on it until it hits retail and let a few more people play it and maybe get a chance to play it myself. It looks good. I definitely would be interested in how the solo play works. I, I tend to be kind of iffy on campaign games even with solo because then you're committing yourself to playing it a number of times and i don't always find the time to play things over and over again but mm -hmm. it's definitely interesting um well this one is actually driven by a win-lose system sort of like journeys of middle earth um from fantasy flight i know that one's app driven mm -hmm. but even if you lose a scenario it continues so mm -hmm. basically with their storybook and there's a story deck, it looks to be that you're still going to get to an ending, but you're right. I guess you'd have to play it multiple times to have maybe multiple endings from the looks of it, <clears throat> but it does continue even if you lose, win or mm -hmm. lose, which I think is pretty interesting. And I think that's the way it should be. That's what I didn't like about Gloomhaven. Um, I hated that. that. I hated Gloomhaven for the reason that you fail and you just, you still get your XP and you're still leveling up your character but you have to replay the same exact thing over and over again sometimes if you get stuck. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. I hate that. Just let me proceed and give me so, show me something new. Show me s consequences to what right. I'm doing. Yeah. That's what this looks like to me uh, on first blush. That's a little bit more cool. digestible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, just curious. What, what is wrong with the art? Uh, the looks that's what really I'm good. screaming, Gary. Yeah, I I'm like a it too. Huge I mean, fan yeah. of his have art people style. seen yeah. the well, new? Let's ask our resident art critic, Anthony. <laughs> He's got an opinion <laughs> all right, about yeah. art always. <laughs> um, I think it's really good, and actually, that's what drew me to the cover of this box initially. The like cover's art. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, be it's beautiful. I think it's yeah. great. It's beautiful. Uh, I, I love this style of art. This kind of like realistic animation, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's almost like comic it's book not... shading. It is. Yeah. And I think it's because it's not the Micho, right? Garfield almost exclusively every one of their games up until this antiquity series is the Micho. And so I think any departure from the Micho, um, well, some people aren't going to like it. That, and I think that might be why. Interesting. Cause I know yeah. you love the Micho, right? I do. I like the Micho. I don't love the Micho. I love them. We interviewed him. That's how much I love him. Yeah. Everyone loves the Micho. And no, not only that, he's just he's just a fun he's fun. Like he was yeah. just such a fun guy. If you haven't seen the interview, he's he's hilarious. He he had us laughing on camera and off camera. He's just a he's crazy. I love it. No, I think but I anyway, think the art art's great. And I just yeah. What, one thing I have, uh, one of my reservations with this with this series, like cuz this is this is a sprawling series is that I guess to me, the art is so similar and, and almost like it looks like the boards, the setups, the iconography, a lot of it's so similar that it's almost like samey from game to game to game to game to game. And I, I just want to make sure that each game, like this looks a lot like Hadrian's Wall. You know what I mean? Like, so am I going to get the same experience, but in a board game that I already have with Adri Hadrian's Wall? I can just pull that out and play that, right? Um, yeah. I just, I, like, how different is it? Like, I almost. I almost bought uh, Raiders of Scythia, right? Which is basically, mm -hmm. isn't that like a, a reprint of another game? Raiders yeah. of... Right, Raiders of the North Sea. Of the North Sea. Oh, no, so sorry. it's like... Um, uh, the Viking version. Viking yeah, the, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, am I going to fall into that trap? Like, that's where I get a little bit nervous. Yeah. With these. Yeah, Raiders of Scythia basically is Raiders of the North Sea with the expansions built in, plus the animals. Um, that you don't get in Raiders of the North Sea. The eagles and the horses are in Raiders of Scythia. I Again, it, it's I had both games. I played both games. I like both games, but I got rid of Raiders of Scythia because I prefer the Vikings, and I like the Micho's artwork in that one, and I didn't need two of the same game. They are right. that similar. There's differences, but to me, not enough. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Like this one, there's the cards. You, it, it, you have the barbarians attacking. It may have some Hadrian's Wall feel. I do think the storybook, though, this is the first time I think that Shem 
and Garfield have moved into a storytelling storybook kind of game, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they've ever done that, even with their Tome Saga, mm -hmm. which the Tome Saga is those different, you know, that tie all the different, you can kind of play them in a campaign. Mm -hmm. It's not really story driven. Like this is the first time there's an actual storybook and story cards. And I think that that for that reason alone, I'm just going to say it right now, like I'm I'm probably going to back this because even though I'm not much of a solo gamer, this could pull me into it just because of that. Yeah. I, yeah. I do like the, uh, you know, the 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 Chinese dynasty sort of historical things. So yeah. that I like that yeah. theme. That that kind of gets me. So I, mm -hmm. I like this. I, I might actually scoop this. Personally. Yeah, and for forty forty three bucks. That's I mean they, they run their Kickstarter so well. If you want to wait, um, Renegade will publish it, and yeah. and mm -hmm. it'll be the, basically the same price. Yeah. Like, and you're not getting any, you're not getting any exclusives. Like there are promos and stuff, but you can always get the promos later. They yeah. sell them. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a yeah. big promo chaser. So. <laughs> right, I'm not either. Yeah. Like, all right, uh, yeah. all right. So um, let's go around. Let's give the vote here. So you know Five my votes. Vote. Yeah, so I'm, in. I'm in. I'm all right. in. All right, we'll, well go. I different. guess I'm out because Anthony's in. So. I'm in. We don't both want it, so we'll go a different <laughs> route. We'll uh, we'll start with Gary. What do you think? Uh, I'm out on this one, but I, I I might wait to see what you have to say when you get it. Okay, <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> right, so I, I got a lot of pluses here, folks. So it, it it's tough. Like it's, uh, forty three bucks, not yeah. too horrible, right? Artwork, love it. Circadian's light, it drew me in. I love that artwork on, on, on the first version of it, even yeah. when his artwork wasn't even that good. Uh, I still love that style. Uh, fail forward. We talked about fail forward, and I'm totally with Brandon on this whole Gloomhaven thing which is why I was out on Gloomhaven. It's the same reason I never finished Mario Brothers as a kid. You mean I got to play all nine levels again because I failed? Yeah. Right? Like, I'm out. Yep. I get some you know, PTSD thinking about that. Uh, <laughs> the non-linear aspect of the campaign, I love it. I think uh, uh, Sleeping Gods up here on my shelf here, mm. Sleeping Gods, yeah. right? It, I, I imagine a storybook with numbers. You go here, then you go there, right? Depending on what you did. So that kind of sandboxy feel. Uh, but then you lost me. Uh, when I heard someone say it, it's it's about stopping a flood, and I just thought, oh, I have Forbidden Island. I'm good. I got Forbidden <laughs> Island. <laughs> and, and I do own Hadrian's Wall, so I'm with I'm with Anthony on that yeah. idea that you know Hadrian's Wall can give me the similar feels, and I can do it multiplayer. Where this one, I'm only going to be able to do solo. Right. So for though for all those pluses I gave, those those two minuses yeah. are enough to say I'm out. Granted, Hadrian's Wall's multiplayer is kind of limited. Right, it's just the train. It's, but you know what? I'd rather play solo multiplayer sure. with friends than just solo. Right, and then we can yeah. compare scores. Than mm -hmm. limited to just solo. Yep. No, good points. Good points. And That's Alan. why uh, Paul Mylan okay. gives you two decks so you can play solo <laughs> yeah. with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, I think on this one, I'd say I'm in. Uh, it does. Oh, it does yeah. look intriguing. I don't know that I actually will back it. Like, like I said, because yeah. their games come to retail and I have the luxury of being able to wait and really, you know, learn more about it. But I would say just from first blush, I would be in on this one. Um, it looks interesting. Awesome. I do like the solo. I have liked the campaign for like welcome to the moon. And it seems like it's probably very similar in that you take a path and you just kind of keep moving forward, whether you win or lose. Um, so yeah, looks cool. All right, cool. Okay. So next game, this will be an easy one for all of us. I'll just throw it up. Uh, you know what? I'll give you all the links so you can pull it up. I didn't do that last time. It's my fault. There you Turn go. on my Google Foo. Oh. Merchant's Cove. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mastercraft, right? Can't wait for Mastercraft. this. Mastercraft. Oh, yep. So okay. we will. Let's see here. Okay. Share that one. Boom. Merchant's Cove. All right. All right. So we uh, we covered this, we and did. Uh, just recently, and so Francis did a. I we didn't do a, a playthrough. Little... She did sort of no. an overview. Well, we did a we did a playthrough of Merchants Cove like I want to say less than a year ago, yeah. or a year ago. Um, so we and we didn't have the new expansion to do the playthrough with this time. So um, we were like, it doesn't really make sense to do a whole other playthrough. Um, so we we're like, we'll just go over the the new characters. Yeah merchants um and so that's what that's you know that's what we did but man the, so exciting yeah the um the components you know obviously when we get these prototypes this one was was in real prototype shape so it mm -hmm. wasn't fully functioning so to speak right. and it was incomplete because they just ran out of time to get all the parts out but 
Yeah. Um, but we're not but gonna it's complete enough. Yeah, I'd like to yeah. hear. From, yeah, I'd like to hear from the rest of you. Like, how yeah, many of you? Who have you played it? What are your thoughts on it? All that good stuff. <laughs> Not everybody all at once. No, no. Oh, okay, <laughs> I guess I'll jump on in. Go ahead, Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I've not played Merchant's Cove, right? With, okay. With yeah. regards to Merchant's Cove, I've not played it, and I really had no desire whatsoever really? to, to even play in this world. And Merchant, you throw the word Merchant in there, and I'm uh, kind of out, right? Oh, okay. more, more trading in the Mediterranean, yay. <laughs> 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 However, after watching your video uh -huh. and, and learning about the play not asymmetry in player but mm -hmm. asymmetry in mechanisms right yeah, that's and exactly how what it you is. do yeah. what you do right right almost like a massive darkness too where where you know you're not just the rogue or you're not just the fighter you play the game differently than i do you're yeah. playing right. the mechanisms differently than i do yeah that to me makes me say okay this is on my radar like yeah it's it's so cool how you're you're all doing the same thing. So like you're even, you're creating small goods, you're creating large goods. Folks are coming into the shore and you're selling those large goods and small goods to buyers of that same color. That's it. Like that's the game basically. That's the, that's what you're competing to do from there. How you create those small and large goods is completely different depending on the merchant that you're playing. And what I love about this is that to whatever kind of mechanics you like, you can kind of pick a merchant that is, I like to press my luck. I'm going to pick this one. I like to do, you know, more, um, you know, turning stuff into other stuff to turn it into other stuff. I'm going to do that. Maybe you're more puzzly or whatever. So they just keep kind of cranking out these merchants that do different things, but ultimately you're all doing the same thing at the end. Yep. Yeah. This is, um, this is one of my top 100 games of all time. This is a great game. Um, we have the base game with the four characters, and then we got the three additional characters, and I still haven't played with all of them yet. I did play mm -hmm. with the dragon rancher. Yeah. Literally, you're hatching dragons, and then as they grow, they poop, and you feed them, <laughs> and you have to <laughs> go around. You have to clean up their poop. It is the most charming game. And again, it has art by the Micho. I just have to say that. Yeah, there course. you go. Yeah, no, it's so, so good. It draws me into the world. I love his characterizations, whether it's like realistic depictions, uh, well, semi-realistic like of Vikings or this in this five realms. So you are merchants, Carlos, but you're merchants in the five realms, not the Mediterranean. So it's a little bit different, <laughs> but the same. <laughs> uh, but no, I love the apprentices in the center that you can hire to trigger different things. I love the time track. Like that to me is such a mm -hmm. neat mechanism where the person furthest behind gets to go. And so technically you could get more actions depending on how that works. Um, it, but yeah, you're right. I, I like the, it's variable player power, but not it's not as similar as other games. You're playing a whole separate mini game yes. and they're all yes. good. They're yes. all yes. good. Every yeah. one that I've played, they're all good in their own way. It's, and it's so fun and it's always a challenge. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to this one because look, it adds another board. There's tracks and, Anytime you show me tracks, I, I, I'm on the path with you. I want to go trekking. <laughs> give me my staff. I'm, I'm Frodo with the ring. I'm off. Like, give me a track. Nice. Um, love that. Uh, and then uh, there's, what, four or five more characters. And now you're getting Johnny Pack. I don't know if anybody knows. I have, yeah. a, signed, I have a signed copy of Fistful of Meeples and a promo card from Johnny Pack. Like, he signed the box. I asked him if he would do it. So I'm a big Johnny Pack fan, and he is one of the characters now in the game, if you back this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's cool. And he's going to have his own, little, his own little miniature and all this stuff. So I am so geeked about this one. That's awesome. Allie, what did, have you played this one? What do you think about it? No, I haven't played this one. Uh, it looks really great, um, but I didn't back it, and it seems, it almost seems like too much game for mm. me mm. with all of the different, you know, player powers or, you know, the factions that you can pick from, the different characters you can play. It feels sort of like where I got with the Isle of Cats, where it was just like too much. Right. And it's, I also have a tough time being a completionist mm. that I want all of it, but <laughs> yeah. then am I going to actually play all of it? So like yeah. I have right. every single, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but I have all of the Disney villainous. Oh, Why? Okay. Because I have to have them all when they come out, <laughs> I have to get all of them so that I can play all of the characters. And I feel like I would get into that with Merchant's Cove. This might become so an it's, expensive endeavor for you. <laughs> yes. And takes up a lot of shelf space yeah. and a lot of real estate. And then because right now, like my main 
playgroup is my daughters who are eight, seven and eight, almost nine. Uh -huh. This isn't something that they're going to be playing anytime soon. Right. And so it, yeah, it looks great. I'd love to play it, but probably not one that I would add to my collection. Gotcha. I haven't played it. I want to play this you? one. Yeah. You I want to? Yeah, I have not played this. Okay. And um, in fact, I really hadn't looked at it until this Kickstarter came. I mean, I obviously have heard about this game, but I never really dove deep into it. I didn't realize all these different characters. Um, you know, my thing would be because, well, kind of like what Allie just said. I mean, back when I was just a young gameling, uh, you know, you got to get everything. Uh, but um, would you guys have played it, would the base just be enough to like, wow, I mean, you're going to get a lot of game in this or, or um, some of those add-ons be like, oh, this add-on would be phenomenal to get. Personally, I think that if you, um, if you have the base and it comes with, you know, the base, like four characters, whatever it is, yeah, it does. you may, if you're playing it a lot, you may like, okay, I get the strategy of this one character. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of over it. Okay, now I've played all four. I kind of mm -hmm. get how to get the things I need to get. And I've sort of like solved the puzzle, if that makes sense. Right, um, yeah. The expansions you're going to want to get. So like to Ali's point, you're going to want to kind of get all of them because I think over time, if you play it enough, and we certainly haven't gotten to that point with even the base yet. Um, but it, I, what I think is probably the biggest barrier to entry, in my opinion, is with these asymmetrical styles. If you are the one kind of doing the teaching in your game group, or if not everyone owns the game and you're just kind of getting together to play, you've got to explain not one game, but like mm -hmm. four games. <laughs> and it's not mm -hmm. simple to explain exactly how all of the things work. So. It's actually exactly. not, it's not root though. Um, root, it's not oh, root. Yeah. Yeah. root oh, would be root is <laughs> is insane. Okay, yeah. I was about this, to ask that very question. This that's a this, whole different conversation. It's a good, but that is a good point, though. It is a good point. Yeah. I'm not trying to deny that that's a good point. It is. Yeah. However, each character has its own little booklet. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like two pages and it mm -hmm. explains everything very, very easily. So if you if you play with gamers, like they'll probably easily be able to just pick that up and understand it like there's a core yeah. set of rules that you can teach but the main set of rules is going to be in each of those little player bundles those little books right. um but it's not root so don't like get scared yeah. and thinking it's so asymmetrical because yeah. i wouldn't i couldn't even f fathom well, teaching like said, at least people. with this yeah. one the asymmetry yeah. also like you're all doing the same thing so when you explain the game at least when i do i'm like yep. look we're all trying to get small and large goods that's it and then like yep. here's how the main game works in order to do that, though, you're doing it in kind of different ways. Um, and at least, you know, these last four that I just did an overview on, and it's all fresh for me, which is why I can mm -hmm. kind of bring it up, is um, they were a little bit more complex, in my opinion, than the originals. Not in, not in any kind of way that I would say this is, like, in any way more than, like, a midweight sort mm -hmm. of game. But, um, but there is definitely some deeper strategy there that you may yeah. not pick up right away. And depending on your game group, I know we have some people that we play with that get, you know, well, I didn't know you could do that, or you didn't tell me I could do that. Yeah. So they're <laughs> um, making it. May not read the whole book. Yeah. They're making it deeper than you're saying. It's they're a little, going yeah. A little at least I okay. felt like it was a little yeah. deeper. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, Power they're more, creep. Yeah. They're more complex, right? Because yeah. before you've got, there were more basic design uh -huh. where you had like, okay, I have a micro version of Potion Explosion here. So we're going right, to, you, know, exactly. you know what I mean? Like, but it's like down to like four marbles versus like a whole tray of them right so and it's just managing that but at the end of the day they're all they're all easy enough to learn mm -hmm. that yeah and it's not anything like the asymmetric asymmetric type game you'll see in vast or root right, right. yeah we we per both of us how do quick not is like the game? how quick is it it's not long it's not a no. long game i want to say it's maybe no. 60 minutes i don't know what the official it's like it's because of that being like a, yeah yeah mm-hmm like if you had a good gaming group, like, hey, let's just bust out a Merchant's Cove here for, yeah. you know, 60 mm -hmm. minutes and just, I'm going to do that guy because everybody kind of knows the gist. Yeah, yeah. Yep. you can do it's it. It's definitely do it. a winner. Yep. Yeah, it. it's a great, great game. Because yeah. that time it's track keeps you pushing on. Like there, there's, and the boats, yeah. when they come in, like there's there's timing of things. You have to, mm -hmm. you have to react to certain things in time. And so the game sort of like, 
keeps you moving along. Like even mm-hmm. on the time track, you're you're as you move during along different spots, you're adding people to those boats. Well, as those boats fill up, they're going to come in and dock. So you feel that rush, that crunch, right. like, and so that actually does help the game like move along, which is like mm-hmm. a win-win. You feel the tension, but then it's like okay, the game's not dragging on forever and ever. Right. Yep. Yeah. So Plus, it's, it's coming uh, with a big box it. with game trays, which I'm uh, excited about. <laughs> that's that. Uh, actually, that's really nice. <laughs> Spring has all the perks. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So we well, did it already this. takes up a whole Calyx shelf because all three of the other characters plus the main box, like it doesn't fit. Like I and I'm like, oh no, another box of this. Yeah. But then I saw the mega box and I'm like, yes, need that. <laughs> the mega box. Mega box. And I love the art on it. <laughs> I love yeah, the art yeah. on it. Right. Oh yeah. So where's everybody at with this one? Well, let's we'll start with who. Yeah. Brands a thumbs Brand, up. Brands a thumbs up. You already up. heard me. Uh, yeah, you right. already yeah. heard me anyway. I, I, I'd be a yay on the base. Okay. Okay. I'd be a yay on the base. There you go. Carlos? All right. Well, I, of course, I take notes, but I do. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary and Allie <laughs> talked a little bit about the young gameling, gotta catch them all thing. I, I want to dispel that. I've been yeah. gaming two decades, over two decades now, and I'm still trying to catch them all. Ali, I got all the villainous up there, too. <laughs> so I feel, and I, I don't think I've cracked but one box, right? Uh, it, so, yeah, that's a trap. Like, the, this Merchant's uh, Cove, it, it's a trap on that end. Uh, but things that make me say I want in on this is it's, it feels like kind of like Small World, the merchandising game, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. has that kind of Small World feel to it. Everybody plays different characters that do it differently but we're all doing the same thing yep. um, mm-hmm. you know ali you talked about your new game group congrats it's awesome this small game group you have of the younger kids i don't know if you play <laughs> villainous with them if that's even come uh, out yet we've played i've played villainous once with my almost nine-year-old because she is reading well enough now to read her own cards oh cool there you go yeah I have a feeling that this would be more simple than even Villainous would because, it, all, all, you know, Villainous comes with the player book, kind of like what Brandon talked about with Merchant's Ghost, comes with the, the two-pager. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, they're all heading to the same goal. Where, like, Villainous, not only are you doing it differently, you're also doing a different goal. So this yeah. might actually work is, it's, is my impressions on it. It's uh, easier but, than Villainous, in my opinion. I, I agree with Carlos on that. That's what I was feeling. Wait, so villainous what is about. harder than people think. I don't think Villainous it is. I, this is easier than, than Villainous, in oh. my opinion. Yeah. Wow. And yep. this is based on the video Without that I doubt. saw. Yeah. You know, an awesome group. You know, it's a good this, point. This Ant Labs thing. They did this video on it. It was great to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then my last it. point <laughs> is is the trap, Gary. Right. The the trap that I'm feeling is, I know I'm going to want all of it, but I want the base box. But if, when I do get all the expansions or all the extra characters with it, because I'm always the evangelist, I'm always teaching new mm-hmm. people. I feel like I'm going to have those three characters or four characters that I know that are simple. And I'm always going to be teaching mm. those same four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, okay, what do you think? Are, are you ready to step up? Oh, you want to go play something else now? Okay. <laughs> right. pump, I'll yeah. teach somebody else these same four characters. <laughs> and never explore the rest of the game. Yeah. But uh, all that being said, this is one I'm looking out for after the Kickstarter when it comes out to retail. It, it will definitely be on my, uh, hey, honey, if you're going to buy me something, this is, this is the, it, it'll be on that list. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Allie, Allie, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, this one for me, it looks good. I'd like to play it, but for me, it's a pass just because mm. I, I feel like you'd have to go all in yeah. on it. And I just, I don't, I don't know if I can go all in on it, but. And you yeah. have to solo three characters. You know? Yeah, I don't think you'd have to solo three characters. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like that, people two you handing, solo you know, each oh, one. Yeah. Well, that would be so. But again, much. <laughs> that's the other reason why I think I'd be leaning towards going all in because if I'm going to solo it, yeah, then I'm going to learn the game solo, and I'm going to play character one, and then I'm going to move on and play yep. the next one, and the next one, and then I'd want to move through all of the characters yeah. and try them all out. That's a good point. So, it is a good. It is a good solo game though too. The solo opponent's pretty tough. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. He has, his, he has know, his own little board. Yeah. Yeah, I know Mike Delisio loves it. Uh huh. It's so. real. It's real good. <laughs> And he likes it solo. It <laughs> it probably would be good, and I'd love to play it sometime. But for right now, it'd be a pass for me. All right. Cool. So that was Richard's Cove Master Craft. All right. So next up, we'll do <clears throat> we'll do one called Almost Innocent. Oh, okay. Did anybody take a look at this one by chance? I did. Yeah, I watched I the did. video. It's the okay. same. Is it the Hidden Figures people? Yeah, um, it's the yeah. same artwork, I think. Yes. Or same um, artwork. Yeah. Yeah, similar. Art so this style. is yeah, this is by Colossal. Um and I 
I have. I'm in, I'm interested in this. I'm kind of excited by it, but I'll be honest, I have questions because I feel like it looks like a simple game. And looking through, I was trying to watch through some of like the, the, I don't think they had like a full play through, but I watched like the overviews and stuff. And I still had some questions about how it actually works because it's sort of an abstract game. It's, um, it reminded me of those logic puzzles that um, at least I used to do where like you'd have like a story and then you had to try to figure out like whose cake belonged mm -hmm. to which person or whatever. Um, so it seems like you, you're you doing a lot of deductive reasoning. I love those kinds of games. Um, and you're trying to help out the person, I guess, to your left with whether, like, what the what evidence they have against you or something like that. Um, yeah. So in theory, it seems easy to understand what's happening. But you've got like this. It's a campaign game. You've got this book in front of you. Um, I know you're flipping through the pages and there's like a different map <laughs> on each page. I have no idea what these, what these maps actually mean. Like, I understand that you're trying to help each other and you're writing stuff down on your card to do the deduction, but I didn't get a good feel for how the game actually plays. And that's frustrating me because it looks like something I would really enjoy. It, it's very <laughs> abstracted though. You have to choose, like, if you look at the bottom, if you have mm -hmm. to choose rows or columns, this is the one thing I was looking at too. Like, well, okay, a cooperative deduction game. That's cool. Like, how do you play? But it looks abstracted. And that's what kind of pulled me out of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to basically ask questions and that's the whole point, right? You're asking the right questions, well, but you're you asking have to, how many yeah. or what kind. Yeah. And that's all anybody said in their videos. Mm -hmm. And I get that, but mm -hmm. I'm like, but what does the book in the middle have to do with any of it? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I just, that part just frustrated me because I didn't I do like I the artwork. Though. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, yeah. I think that that exposes a sort of a challenge or at least a critique with some of these campaign pages, right? It's like they're trying to sell you a product. And if, what they're putting up isn't clear mm -hmm. on what you're doing you're probably not going to convince somebody to buy it right because mm -hmm. you're looking at all the information that they're providing you and if and if you're done consuming all of the, the the print on the page you're done watching all the preview videos and you're like i still don't understand what's going on right that, and that's where we are after this Doing the well, and I here. didn't. Anthony knows I spent probably like almost an hour just like trying to watch these videos. Everybody was saying the same things and the videos are well done and everybody did a great job. But it was kind of like, ask the right questions. How many or what kind? And then you're going to mark it off on your paper. We had so much fun. And now I'm like, OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And which, again, is, it's frustrating to me because this looks like a game that I probably would really like but i would be out on the kickstarter on backing it and just kind of wait for it to come to retail and maybe try it out or pick it up um you know just just again because i'm not i'm not completely sold on what's actually happening but i'm intrigued hmm. yeah it looks like kind of a search for planet x kind of thing except cooperative instead of competitive where you're mm -hmm. kind of lodge, trying to you're deducing by eliminating, right? Mm -hmm. You're eliminating mm -hmm. options in order to arrive at a solution, except you're doing it together, mm. I guess. The rules are also in draft form. So I don't know if that maybe is the reason why, because I don't know. on the page? Because I, I They are. They're nor are near they the there? bottom, and it's it says read draft see? rules. Ah, oh. see, and I couldn't even find... I mean, they might have just added it, you know. Maybe. Another, no. It's another. Uh, that's what I'll, the first thing I'll do. Beat. Just the way I learn best is by reading. So, like, yeah. I'll go and actually read the rules for a lot of these campaigns if they're on the on the page, and that's how I get a good idea of how how it plays. Um, but yeah, okay, I'll have to take yeah. a look again and see. That's the, the challenging thing with these campaigns is that when they throw up these draft rules, they are incomplete. They're confusing, and like if you're still in draft. And you're still funding. That's a little like you may end up getting a, delivering a product that wasn't what was promised at the time of the campaign, mm -hmm. right? And that's yeah. that always true. Well, and it, and the people are doing the videos, and that means they were going off by draft rules or just kind of which we do. Or, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like, well, so did you play the game right, or is it going to be changed? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you could watch any of our earlier videos. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I think um, uh, was it terraforming Mars? Terraforming I think, Mars. Actually, it's completely different. Great, we get comments every, weekly, 
well, you played this wrong. You played that wrong. You played that wrong. And it's like, it was a Kickstarter. Like I'm half tempted yeah. to take it Yeah, we had, we, we had draft <laughs> rules when we did this video like five years ago and it was a Kickstarter. Like that, but this, this always happens because the rules yeah. are so, mm-hmm. so bad. And it's, it's a shame because I think a lot of publishers are rushing to get their product, mm-hmm. their projects yeah. onto Kickstarter. They're not taking mm-hmm. the time to really fully like, I always expect, and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I always expect the Kickstarters, when they hit the crowdfunding, they should be ready, right? Like, they should be at the point that they're ready to order the actual production now. Get the number of prints, order the production, right? Not, I'm still designing. Or maybe they're waiting for a few art art assets to uh-huh. be done. That should be it. The rules should be done, in my opinion. But they're never, yeah. they never are. They never, they never are. are. Um, I'm curious. Uh, let's see. Gary and Allie and Carlos, what did you guys, did you guys look at this? What kind of, did you like these kinds of deduction games? Any thoughts on it? I do like these deduction games. I don't know, a little critique for me. I was just like, I like the art, but wow, that's a dark, dark box cover. Like it, yeah. if I saw it, I'd be like, I don't know what that is. I'd probably just move on. Like it didn't screen me. <laughs> what, what am I, you know, like, what am I like, looking at? Yeah. Like that game, True Detective, or no, excuse me, Detective Club. Oh, yeah. You know, that's like, okay, I think I know what's going on. I don't, you know, it, that's deductive and it's, it's simple and it's using the Dixit cards you can see on the back, but. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, they, they, I don't really know what this game is about because even the rules are kind of in draft form. So yeah. I don't know. This is definitely going to be a big hold for me. All right. Uh, Allie, are these the kind of games you like to play? Uh, yeah, I do like deduction games. I like you, Francis, I used to love doing all of those logic puzzles. And, you know, if we'd go on a car trip, I'd get one of those books you could get at the supermarket (laughs) with all the logic puzzles that gives you like five statements of fact and you cross out all the the X's. And uh, we just got the key sabotage at Lucky Llama Land. And I've been Mm. playing that with my oldest daughter a ton. She loves that game and she can actually play it by herself. So she's kind of getting into that deductive reasoning of okay, I have these facts and how do I put them together to cross cool. everything off? So I didn't see what the player count was on that game. Is it like it's two, two? To, two to five? It is two, yeah, two, you two to five. To five. Two. Yeah, I mean, I think it would depend on seeing, I didn't watch any of the videos mm-hmm. for it, but if it's fairly easy, it probably would be a good one because it is cooperative. And so you're helping each other out and going through the different scenarios in the book. Uh, so it's definitely one that I'm interested in. I like the art style. I don't actually mind the box cover. I kind of like those dark art style box covers, especially if it's looking at like crime and kind mm-hmm. of gritty sort of thing. So for me, it's a tentative would probably back this one. Um, I, I want to look at it just a little bit more, but I like the idea mm-hmm. of it. Cool. Carlos. Um, yeah. All right. So some of the feels that I get from almost innocent right off the bat uh, in 2019, Simon Expo gave uh, in Georgia when I attended, they gave me a copy of 13 Clues. Not sure mm-hmm. if y'all have ever played it, um, but I like the idea of it. It's right. It's taking these games that uh, like Clue or Cluedo type of games mm-hmm. and trying to modernize it, make it more gamery. And I think what this is trying to do is make it more abstract, right? Uh, that whole puzzle logic adding to it kind of the clue feeling um, but it has that uh and english is not my first language folks so i'm try it that uh, <laughs> like uh libertalia the new version the mm-hmm. uh, anthropomorphic <laughs> anthro- anthropomorphic <laughs> yeah thing going right so <laughs> yeah but with the the description of the theme of this game the setting of this game it feels like a crew from one of the ships off like libertalia had some crazy wild party so we have like hangover the board game right like i did something <laughs> but I don't know what I did. And so I got to go like go through the story journey to learn what things I did that got me in trouble the next day. How did I lose my tooth? Why do I have a face tattoo? Mm-hmm. Kind of a, a feeling. Yeah. Uh, but in a board game sense, uh, but I'm not sure if I'm into, because I'm not into those logic games as much. Right? I like the more yeah. deduction where I'm going to ask you questions and kind of figure out you know, what, what you have versus what I have. Uh, but having to combine it with a, a spatial puzzle, part of what I didn't like about uh, God, uh, sleeping gods, where the combat, where it turns in combat into this this logic puzzle of you know laying pieces down onto grids, it it takes it away from me. And then you throw in this rules and chapters 
description where it talks about, you know, every chapter, learn the new rules. So I'm going to have to go through a series of learning new rules on top of that. It kind of mm-hmm. takes me out. So the idea of updating deduction is great. I love it, mm-hmm. uh, but not the direction I would have wanted to go in. I wonder if the rules updates in this one are similar to like the search for planet X where you have very specific rules for where things can be when you play like the easy, the short version of the search for planet X. And then when you go to the longer, like the more complex advanced version of it, you actually have slightly different rules about where each of the bodies can be within the space. So Mm -hmm. if it's something simple like that, where it's just like your rules of where things can be and how things work and you tweak it that way, it might be good. Um, but yeah, if you're having to learn new rules for every single one, mm-hmm. maybe well, it that's not looks as exciting. like, and I think I might've figured out too, what's kind of got me a little bit off about this is you couldn't let it go. Could she? I, I can't, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking for the rules too. And I, Oh yeah. Read the draft rules here. There they are. Um, I'll have to read the rules and come back to this and see, but, um, it, cause it looks like what you're doing basically is like you have four cards and all your neighbors have four cards your four cards are the solution for the person on your right. Okay. So you're the person, like when it's my turn, I'm going to ask based on this, this book that's in the middle, I'm going to say, okay, row one, how many of my clues for my solution do you have that are in this row? And you might say two, because two of the cards that you're holding for me, show up in that row right and so i'm like okay cool so now i know i have two so i have to like make a note of that but my thing is if you know what the solution is for me and we're working on all of this together why are we even going through (laughs) just like showing the cards so to me like a deduction puzzle is more fun when nobody knows the solution and we're all kind of trying to figure it out together like a time stories or even like an exit or something like that um but I think that's what's getting me about this. Or it's like, like so my- abstract. Mysterium when one person knows them all exactly. and everyone else right, is trying right, to right. figure out. Yeah, the answer, yeah. Right? yeah. So Have y'all had a chance think... to play uh, 13 Clues from no. uh, Simon? No. So and it I has that little that, yeah. board, the blinder board, uh-huh. very much like this game has, right? The little blinder board, which right. is why it reminded me of it. Hmm. But on the front of the 13 Clues blinder board, the player board that you hide behind are uh, clear sleeves. Okay. And your three cards, location, weapon, and person that you killed, right, are on the front facing out. Mm-hmm. So I have to ask questions because oh. everybody else knows what I have. Right. I don't know what I have. So I got to yeah. ask questions mm-hmm. to try to deduce what are the three in front Almost of me. Almost like headbands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's kind of what it reminded me here is, is others know what I should know, but I got to right. get it out of you. Yeah. Huh. That's, that's exactly what's going that's on. That's pretty here, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right, so that Sorry, was beat that horse. <laughs> <laughs> um, almost innocent, right? So now we're moving on. We'll move on to Uluk. Okay, cool. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> now, who submitted Uluk? I, know. I think I did. <laughs> yeah, I'll let Allie talk about it. Yeah, I'll oh, know yeah. a little bit about this game. It just kind of piques my interest. So. All right, yeah. Tell us. I- I mean, I would, again, I haven't been on Kickstarter for a while because I've been trying to be responsible about my space on my shelves and my money. So I haven't been looking, but this is the one that kind of caught my eye today when I was just scrolling through. And it's a worker placement Euro game where you're managing your resources, you're going out with your tribes people and you're collecting uh, different kinds of food, um, whether it's plants or animal food, and you're bringing it back, and then you use those food that you've collected to either turn it into um, actual like prepared meals to feed your people, or you can actually turn them into poison to tip your arrows so that you can be more productive on hunting (laughs) the animals later on. Interesting. And then you're building totems, and if you can't feed your people, you'll get like hunger icons, which are worth negative points at the end. And then depending on where you go, the more resources people gather from each space during a round will like reduce the number of resources that are available in the next round. And I think there was like some fun economy pieces where if you're like you deplete all of the insects, for example, then like the vegetation, the plant life will actually increase 
for the next round because there's less insects eating them. And so there's balances between the different resources. Um, I didn't look into it super deep. I watched like one video on the gameplay, but it looked really interesting to me. And it looked like a very sort of light to midweight Euro worker placement game, which is definitely in my wheelhouse. It does include solo. I don't know a whole lot about the solo, but it does include a solo mode too. So it looked good. It has screen printed meeples too, which <laughs> I'm always a fan of. Like I like the components. I'm definitely a bigger fan of screen printed meeples than like miniatures um, yeah. in games personally. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. If it's a Euro game, it, it to me, I don't think there's room for miniatures. It should be screen printed wooden meeples. Well, yeah, this I, one I think has optional for the totem miniatures, mm -hmm. which is fine, but they also send you like the sandy versions, which mm. are probably just as good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. As long as they're not but, the actual workers I'm placing, it yeah. just feels weird putting out the little plastic guys versus wood. Yeah. The meeples uh, look great. What yeah. I was, yeah. So about that, this was also on my list too. And I noticed, um, so it's Hexi Studio. And they actually did all the 3D minis for like Nemesis. Oh, really? Um, and a slew of other, I think Septima, they did the minis for Septima. So they're like a miniatures studio. Um, and they've got, they have other games. So like that you can see the other games that they have here. But I think this is like their first like Euro-y kind of game. Mm. Um, so I don't know much about the background of like, you know, who's designing it with, you know, all that kind of stuff. But oh, yeah. I, I know that the studio, like when I saw the minis and then I saw that, like, I, I always look up, like, <laughs> who are these people? Um, and I was like, oh, that's, you know, that maybe that's why the minis are so good. Oh, well, yeah, Nemesis, uh, Lords of do. Palace. So, yes. Witcher so Old World. Yeah, Witcher Old World. So they're, they're good at making worlds, I think, kind of come alive, which is what was so attractive to me about this game in addition to everything Ali said. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Short, <laughs> short, <laughs> short playtime, too. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. 60 minutes? Yeah, 60 minutes, one to four. What are those? Are those badgers? With, uh -huh. huh. Yeah. So you're back to the anthropomorphic animals yeah. again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Carlos Which is also a game. selling point. Like, let's be honest, it's Everdell esque right? of yes, animals. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. Tribes. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if those monuments are, they look chunky. They do. Yeah. 80, $83 all in. Which comes Another, with and what? that includes some expansions Two. and yep. the miniatures. I think it was two That's expansions plus the miniatures good. plus the yep. base game. Yep. Yeah, base mm. alone is forty six bucks. Not bad. Yeah, it seemed reasonable. It looked like it was very intro, like introductory level, and yeah. you yeah. get a lot of different people to play. Right. And you can get the monuments if you don't get the expansion. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're available as an add on. That's cool. Huh. Yeah, well done, I think, on the campaign for this one. Mm -hmm. Surprising. It's, I would think it would, would do a little bit more, but I don't. I wonder why it's only done 32,000. It's only five days to go. Yeah, What's what was it? Their goal? it is funded, though, right? If funded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if funded. Uh, out of 15. Yeah, you'd expect uh, to be a bigger, <clears throat> bigger number here. I wonder yeah. if that they're so new into like this Maybe. game space. And I honestly, I hadn't heard anything about this game until I really started looking. Um, I'm looking at, you know. Looking at Gary their, asked, uh, why, why hasn't it, well, I've never heard of it, right? So right yeah, off the bat, I know yeah. we're in the middle of, of con <laughs> season. So it's a, it's a lot of other news being pushed out there. I haven't That's really true. heard a lot of Kickstarter <laughs> news, re I feel, recently. Yeah. But Luke has not shown up on my radar at all. And yeah. uh, I'm qu actually quite surprised uh, because, you know, if, if we're going to go down into the, the final thoughts piece of this, yeah, I'm actually quite interested in this one, right? Uh, right off the bat, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the comments in the reviews, right? a lot of the words I'm seeing in there, yeah. if we did a word wall, right, uh -huh. like we do at work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> simple, quick, easy. Like I'm seeing yeah. these words repeated in a lot of the reviews, huh. and I'm all about that life right now. Like, yeah. as I get older, <laughs> that, that, that root life is not, it's not doing well for it's me. Not, not good, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, light, medium weight. Those are things that I'm looking for. But, Allie, it really piqued my interest the way you described this game. Because yeah. it, and, and I started reading through the notes in this game. It's got this, what, what I think I'm going to call like a strategic economy system. Mm -hmm. Where 
you can't just grab everything this round and know that it's all going to be replenished next round and we just do it all again, right? No, you got to think long haul, right? If I grab all of these yeah. insects, it's going to impact the production of, of, like you said, the plants for food mm -hmm. later. So you really have to start thinking strategically, uh, almost like uh, uh, viticulture with the Tuscany expansion, right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, or going big, right? So now you got to go across four different seasons. You really got to plan your placements. That's what I got to feel out of this. So when I see light and I see strategic economy system, I'm thinking this 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 might hit a sweet spot. So I, I'm oh wow, I like it and the You're price in. point. Yeah. I'm in. All right. Wow. So see, maybe they should have thought about getting Ally the Family Meeple to do a video for them because she would have <laughs> she would have sold glowing it. praise yeah. <laughs> message for all you. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I wonder how many people are just in general shying away from kickstarter i know like mm -hmm. i personally am shying away from kickstarter yeah a lot and you know it gets tiring sometimes watching your kickstarter games that you backed a year ago two years ago that should have already delivered and haven't delivered right. and uh, you're like well i could just oh, go yeah. get something in retail instead at this point mm -hmm. um when, when, so I when wonder if those, kickstarters down you're... in general you're 100 percent right because when those those very kickstarters are actually showing up in retail before the backers are getting their copies. That's that's a bigger kick, I think. Oh, um, yeah. So you're right, and I, I see in a lot of the discussions on in Discord, uh, I know Facebook, where people are just like, "I'm done backing Kickstarters for now because it's just it's gotten too expensive, and they're I'm still waiting on delivery on a whole bunch of other projects that I haven't gotten yet from three years ago." So, mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and you're seeing a lot of these companies go belly up before they can deliver this stuff, mm -hmm. or or they're mm -hmm. now hit, you know sat with bills to deliver and they can't afford it and so it's like you run into this it's fear right so i mean we're all kind of tight budget wise so you've, you've got to be smart about what you're willing to spend your money on now so mm -hmm. and everybody's yeah. doing the one dollar back or yeah who did, who did the oh, five dollar right. oh a dead reckoning people they did five dollar back but you don't get that back if you don't decide to pull out but yeah. that's okay that's fair five dollars five dollars to hold out it's a gamble <laughs> hold out. Right? Yeah. Your, yeah yeah so it's better to be out a couple hundred bucks yeah, a better five dollars mm -hmm. versus a couple hundred bucks. You know, so right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 the yeah. And I one. caved on Dead Reckoning because of Brandon. You didn't get it? No, I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> I did get it. Let you me know when you're done. Got it. Let, let me know when you're done with it. All right. <laughs> I'm wondering if that five dollar increase is is trying to remove those commenters only, right? For for a buck, I'll go in and back your game so that I can throw shady mm. comments on your chat. Right. But maybe I'll think about it again for five bucks. Maybe five bucks. I'll just keep my that's own thoughts point. to myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Five kind of may scare some people away who just want to troll, right? Right. Yeah. So is everybody ready for me to bust their bubble on this one? Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, here we oh, go. Wow. Brandon. Yeah. Yes, Brandon. I know you've been, you've been so quiet. This is. And I, like oh, I'm just waiting for my chance. <laughs> well, let's hear did, it. You, <laughs> did you see the shipping on this thing? It no. is ridiculous. Let me, Isn't it like twenty that. bucks or something? No, no, it's All 18, 18 USA, euro for the core game. Twenty-two euro. Okay, so that takes a forty-six dollar game up to sixty-four dollars. Okay, for a, for a game this light, the all-in takes it to a hundred and four dollars. So you see, for me, it's not. This would be a wait, without a doubt. This this one has retail all over it, in my opinion. It's mm -hmm. very light. It's it looks like a light stone age to me, like in that kind of realm. Mm -hmm. I like the theme. I kind of but there really isn't a theme like they there's like one little paragraph at the top about the Uluk sacred tree. But there's really no there's there's no hook. It just seems like it's just a tribal game. It looks it's generic as far mm -hmm. as the theme. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it might have some interesting worker placement mechanics to it. But if it's this light for that expensive. Yeah. Whew, that's a hard pass for me. 22 euro shipping for the all in set takes it to um, 103 euro. And right now the euro and the dollar are pretty much right neck and neck. So they're pretty much a one to one. Yeah. But yeah. that's a lot of money for this game. So, okay, that's here's the thing. And this is like my kick, the Kickstarter thing that bugs me, right? Is that like a lot of these games we've been talking about, we're like, we'll get it at retail, we'll get it at retail. We know Capstone's going to publish it, we know it's going to come out. I'm, I don't know enough about this stuff to know, like, is Hexy Studio going to be delivering to Carl at the Games Keep in Westchester? Because that's where I'm going to be buying it when yeah. it comes to retail. So I may pony up for this one, even with the shipping, 
just because at least in our our circle, I think that this is something we could probably get the kids to play. We could probably enjoy it on a light game night. You know, like I know it'll get played. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know how available it's going to be later. And the scarcity might drive the retail cost up if I'm buying it secondhand or or something. Sure, sure. And I get all I get all that. And it looks really, really good. good But I think I think when you're looking at the struggle that it's having, mm-hmm. a lot of times I've there's only that a handful of there's a whole there's only a handful of reasons why campaigns seem to struggle. One of them's marketing, which I haven't heard I didn't hear about this until Ali mentioned it. Yep. Yeah. And then the other thing is cost. And and we're already talking about how people are like, well, I'm just I'm not doing Kickstarter because of everything going on. That's part of it too. But I think this one is priced way outside even without the monuments like even without the plastic minis um you're you're it's to me it's a that's a that's an expensive proposition because of the shipping because of Mm -hmm. the kickstarter part of it it sounds like it's suffering from both of those things for you brandon because from a marketing standpoint you're not sold on it on the page um and then the shipping has you out before you even maybe watch a video or something right yeah yeah and look i mean they say 60 minutes you know that that's always a lie. Okay. <laughs> it is. Uh, isn't that Vassal's first rule or second rule or something? What? Your first law. Isn't that Vassal's first law that they always lie about the time on games yeah. or something <laughs> like that? So I don't really look at that as, as like, that's not a selling point to me is the game time. Mm. Um, because I know it's never exactly what that is supposed to be. Um, mm-hmm. But I do like the art. I do like the components. I love the, lo- I, I love the art. I mean, the art is just fantastic. Um, but for me, it's like I'm looking at the price. It's like eh. I looked at the how to play and it looks cool. I'm not denying that. But yeah, for me, it's the it's just I don't know about the theme and I'm not really sure about that. Cost. Not enough game for the price. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which well, I know I get a lot of guff for because of that. But, you know, no, I mean, if a light, if a, look, but if yeah. a light. Yeah. But if a light game gets played a lot and you get a lot of value out of it, then mm-hmm. then the cost really shouldn't be a big deal. But for me, it's the entry point. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play this game one time and be like, eh, you know what I mean? That's a lot of money for that. For eh, it's a lot of money. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, those are those are valid points, man. Yeah. So that's a that's yeah. a no from Brandon. Let's go around. No from me. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what do you say? Uh, well, because of the shipping, I'm a no. But I, when this comes to retail, I'm 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 gonna look at it. In at retail, Carlos. Okay, so I, I'm I'm gonna risk the retail because I'm just not a Kickstarter person, right? That's not my thing. <laughs> Uh, I like waiting for the retail, but I, I, I think Francis is right. Like, I feel I'm going to get burned on this one like many others that I don't have. And then, gentlemen, I'll say, I don't think it's the shipping price that bothers you, Brandon Gary. It's that ratio of price to shipping. I mean, 18 bucks to ship something, that's not terrible. I mean, let's be honest. 15 bucks to ship anything on a regular day, right? Yeah. But it's that $45 game to ship it for 18 bucks. That, that ratio is probably hurting you more than the actual shipping price. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. It brings it up to another tier. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But I, I think this game is going to meet that. Like, I'm going to have to go play Francis's copy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to get it in retail. It's not going to come. Uh, all right. So, uh, Allie, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I'm actually going to back it. But for me, this is one that's right in my wheelhouse of things okay. that I would back. Um, so, I, I mean, this one is a back for me for the reasons that Francis mentioned also that it's one that there isn't any guarantee that it's going to go to retail. So if you want yep. it, if you think it's going to be a good fit for your family or for your game group, it's if it's something that fills a space in your catalog or your library that you don't have right now of kind of a entry level worker placement with some resource management aspects to it and fun art, um, then I think it's, it's one to definitely look at. I think, again, the price point is not that bad. The Shipping to me right now is inflated anyway, no matter what you're backing on Kickstarter. So I don't think it's totally out of line. And for me, I don't really mind if a game's theme is like pasted on or barely there. It's it's fine because I'm looking for the mechanics anyway. Right. Cool. Great points. All I right, feel like so, this was where you would take your kids to start them on that Martin Wallace trail of economy games. Ah. Like, you know, I, yeah. I want to get my nine year old to play some brass, but you know what? Let's start with Uluk. Yeah, it feels like something that they could play and it's got the cute little animals and it's got the meeples and it's got, you know, it definitely feels like a very family weight game. Yep. 
All right. So um, I think in the interest of time, let's probably close up with one more game and then call it a, an episode, if you all agree. Ah. If you're all familiar we, with that one. Can we, can we do Fox Experiment? Oh, you want to do that one? Yeah. Uh, Gary. Oh, yeah. I think we talked about that one when you guys called into my show last time. when we were Talking about what came out of Jack. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the ones we talked about. I was surprised this wasn't on the list, actually. A uh, bunch of games. We had. I tried to cut it at 10. We didn't even make 10, so that's why. I didn't, uh, <laughs> yeah. How many did we get to? Uh, we got to like seven or eight. I figured. I was like, 10 is a little... But seven or eight awesome oh. conversations. But yeah, yeah I mean, right? that's really where we were um, trying to go. So let me grab uh, what the is screen. Like the Fox Fox yeah, we talked about this it's, in the, it's in the chat. Oh, you put it in the chat? Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, this is Elizabeth Hargrave. Gary's like, we're not leaving until we get this one in. Yeah, it's in the chat. Uh, uh, I put it in the messenger. I, 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 I want to hear. you on Discord. Put it in one hour. I love when they put that. <laughs> funded in one minute. It's like goal was six six hundred dollars. We funded immediately. Has Panasaurus had any game that wasn't funded? Simon game. Like I know, right? <laughs> I mean, all right. So Gary, talk. Tell us all about it. All right. So this is the Fox Experiment. It's Elizabeth Hargrave's. Um, newest game she's the uh, designer of wingspan and uh was it mariposa mm. the Bear Butter i didn't play oh, that my. one yeah i didn't play Tassie that one yeah. and um this one immediately got me just by the box because growing up i actually had three pet boxes oh Did you and really? i had two red ones and a gray one well me and my brother and sister uh, Eugene, Vernon, and Clarence. Uh, we didn't name them. <laughs> Dad did. And a terrible name. But we had a lot of fun. We'd take it for rides in cars and all that sort of stuff. You know, people are like, what is that? You <laughs> would have a box. Oh, yeah. It's come in the house, lay in your lap, you know. Oh, Clarence? Oh, Clarence? You named yeah. a fox Clarence? No, my dad named a fox Clarence and Eugene and Vernon. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so this game, um, I actually got a chance to see some of, they were playing it live uh, on Dice Tower yesterday mm -hmm. or two days ago, because I really wanted to see what this looked like. Mm -hmm. And it is interesting. Um, a couple positives is, okay, so you, 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 got, um, you got your board, and so each round, it's four or five rounds, you're going to take a female fox and a male fox, and they're going to breed, and you're going to roll dice, okay? Um, and then... You're gonna, you, you can move your kind of your dice around. It was a little hard to see on with their camera angle, but you're gonna move your dice around to give them qualities like uh, um, domestication, like barking and curly tails, like and traits, traits yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Then, and you'll do some things. You also, I think you can also get scientists that can okay. help you and stuff. Then, those two foxes are obviously gonna breed. That's gonna bring out new foxes. And so those pups are going to be the males and female parents of the next round. And so they keep oh. building, they keep building on each other. And those cards you see, you have a, it's a dry erase yeah. and you're marking the traits. So you're trying to make the best breed of Fox by the oh, end of cool. the game. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I was watching the dice tower, uh, play their, um, version of the Fox experiment, uh, just the other day. And um, I was really enjoying the gameplay. The one thing, the kind of the con I didn't like, it is a really kind of messy game. I, there's a lot of dice. I mean, by the end of the fifth round, some, some of those guys were like rolling 10 dice. Wow. Um, and there's a lot of dice. There's a lot of tokens. There's cards. And I, I, I did back it. I do like this game a lot. But I got it with the um play mats i think the play mats mm -hmm. are going to clean this up and you're also probably going to need trays because there is a lot of dice but it looks awesome i'm 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 really looking forward to this okay cool yeah i'm looking at this now uh, oh yeah, it looks interesting i mean you got screen printed meeples now the meeples are all everything's gonna be plastic they said they're not going to do wood because the wood doesn't look good with the screen prints on it Mm -hmm. But they did do go with the plastic and um, lots of foxes. Um, yeah, surprising. That they're so going it's with actually plastic. like how you put the dice together. Like the dice have symbols on them, mm -hmm. right? And then it depends yeah. how you put them together that that um, calls out, I guess, a trait. Is that how that works? Yeah, I think that's how you're marking the traits off on okay. the pup. 
that you're right. writing. And so you'll see like on those dice there, there's the green one that is their friendliness, which is kind of like a wild. Mm -hmm. And you can put it together with the other ones to like fill out. So some of them will have like a half a trait and a half a trait. And you mm -hmm. have to somehow match it up to have a full trait to be able to mark it off. Okay. And the more you mark off, you'll like increase the overall friendliness of the pups that you're breeding. And then you'll mm -hmm. also earn like trait tokens that you can use for other um, like filling in your personal player board and it, there's all kinds of like combos and mm. just like I do these things it's very it gave me kind of a feeling of like a roll and write it yeah, looks like that. also yeah. with a heavier game but like you're only rolling and writing on like your little pup cards and I right. liked how the pup cards then go out and then anyone can basically draft them from the market so the first round is drafting so you're drafting like Gary said a uh, a female and a male which could be just the base cards that are in the game or it could be these ones that you're um, either you or the other players have been breeding throughout mm. the round like the previous round so you also can't draft like a male and a female that were from the same person from the first the last round because they're uh, technically brother and sister so you yeah, can't, yeah like you there's rules oh, like that where you can't okay. draft them and so you're drafting a male and a female, and then you're also drafting for turn order okay. for the next round. And so depending on where you go on the turn order track, there's bonus tokens that get flipped over at the beginning of the round. So you can determine where you're at in turn order based on which bonus token you want to take as well. And there's like objectives that you're trying to achieve with how you're breeding your pubs. It looks, it looks great. Hmm. It, it really does. Are you yeah. in on this one, Allie? I, I'm probably in on this one. Full disclosure, I sort of wish that it was a Stonemeyer release because then <laughs> all of the like bonus and all of the you know extras would just be in and it's one version. Right. Whereas Pandasaurus tends to do the retail version and then they'll do the Kickstarter version, which is Kickstarter exclusive and you can't get it mm -hmm. after the Kickstarter runs. And I tend to dislike that from like a FOMO perspective. I want to yeah. be able to either get the retail or get the deluxe version mm. at retail. Right. Yeah. And that's typically not a thing you can do with Pandasaurus. I did see in this one, it looks like they're putting the solo mode. They're actually printing the cards and the rules and putting it in the retail edition, which they haven't done in some of their games in the past. So I was happy to see that. But yeah, this one is one that I am... I would say I'm in on. I don't know if I actually will back it, but I, I probably will. <laughs> yeah, nice. So we already know Gary's in. Yeah. I'm, yeah. He's, who doesn't he's want to breed with Vernon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Brandon, what about you? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm indifferent. Um, I guess it, it's a possibility. Um, I'm not as attached to Eugene, Vernon, and Clarence as Gary is. <laughs> um, you uh, should. Fact, foxes, in my experience, foxes have just been a nightmare. Uh, we have uh, people. We have people out here that have chickens and ducks, and the foxes are the ones that come in and literally destroy them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm not really you attached. Taking them for rides in the car. Yeah, I, well, here's what I was hoping. It said fox experiment. I was hoping that there was experiments and these foxes were going to be like mutated and be like this cool sci-fi theme. <laughs> I don't like this idea of just breeding them. I just think that's kind of boring. I'm not really much of like, you know, I don't know. A wingspan yeah, school and all. Heart. Yeah, it's just like, okay, you know, and you're marking yeah. off X's. It's okay. Like, uh, is it going to be a lucky kind of game? It sounds like a lot of dice. It sounds like a lot of lucky card draws. Uh, I'm not too much of a fan about that. But here's my problem with Allie hit it right on the head, as she always does. The Kickstarter is, is just not, I don't like the way Pandasaurus does it. For example, mm -hmm. upgraded Fox Meeples for player one is a $100,000 stretch goal. Okay. At $125,000, they upgraded player two. And then further down at $175,000, they upgraded player three. What on earth is this? This is such a <laughs> nonsense. That, that's just list a way of to create, stretch goals. To create no, fake stretch goals. Right? This is yep. fake, fake, fake. For example, what if it funded at one hundred eighty thousand? Would player four not get their plastic meeples? I, oh, I, this is so. <laughs> this is Whoever so shows dumb. Whoever last to game day. Gets yeah, this, four. that's what I mean. You're getting <laughs> the wooden ones. Yeah. This is yeah. this is so egregious in my opinion. Yeah. And as I said off air, um, and I know Carlos, I think disagree with me, but sixty-seven people have backed this at fifty-five dollars <laughs> for the retail. Why? 
the value going five dollars more to get the Kickstarter version plus all the stretch goals is a better value. It just mm -hmm. it just is. So why do they even add the retail version here? If it's going to come out in retail, it will be priced what it is. Why do you have to kickstart a retail version? I guess I never understood that. I'm not really an expert in this, but clearly like it's a it's a moral standing position maybe for those 60 people they're like listen <laughs> yeah. source, i don't right. like your system <laughs> right so maybe I'm, gonna, it is. I'm gonna just take the hit on the crappy version <laughs> to prove to you i, don't I like agree then, then actually pay, i think that might be it why might pay be shipping now why i'm I, here and pay shipping i think it's it's completely a marketing thing and i don't think it's yeah. a bad thing i think this is a marketing psychology sure. thing right because you look at a menu or you look at any tiered structure you're going to show the low price so that you can, and you show the high price so that you can get people at the price you want, right? So yeah. you yeah. have that retail there to remind people, hey, there's a retail version of this that's going to be a little crappier than the one that you could get if you just spent five dollars more. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. I, mean, I agree with you, Brandon. I don't know yeah, why anybody just... would go on a Kickstarter and back a retail version. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and, yeah and then and then look at the shipping look at the shipping there's no shipping there's no table there's no locked in price yeah, for it literally it says after the campaign ends we will charge actual shipping costs yeah, you have luck. no idea what good that's going to be mm -hmm. if they pull a seam on mm -hmm. if they pull another publisher that what, what if you end up what if they end up what if shipping gets worse and they end up charging you the same 55 dollars for shipping and now you're paying double for for the game yeah this just i don't it doesn't smell good it's, at all. This is less about the game. So, Gary, no offense. Uh, the, the, I love the art. I love the cover. I, that's what I mean. I'm very indifferent to this one because of the way that this is coming across as far as this. For me, yeah. it is a moral thing. I'm not going to back it because of this. <laughs> if I, it comes out, yeah, if it comes out in retail and I have wooden meeples and it doesn't look as great as the plastic ones, okay, you know. Whatever. I think you'll still get plastic <laughs> from Pandasaurus yeah. on the meeples. I don't think any of them are going to be wooden but you're going to get sort of like you did with Dinosaur Island and Dinosaur World, where the retail version has like one shape yeah, of the dinosaur right. meeples that's and the plastic, yeah. and then you, you go won't... up to the Kickstarter. Yep. And like I said, I don't, those ones don't bother me as much to get like having just one dinosaur shape when I, I don't like sorting through anyway. Like I'm not going to go look for the type of dinosaur that I just bred. It, it doesn't matter. Um, but when they separate out for me the solo content, yeah, into that's the a Kickstarter problem. exclusive yeah. only. And then I can't get it in retail or they'll say on the retail version too that it does include solo because it does, but it's like a print and play that you can get off of Board mm. Game Geek. Mm. And I was like, that doesn't include solo. And no. even in the Kickstarter for Dinosaur Island, um, the expansion, they improved the solo um, mode, but they didn't print the rule book in either version. So no matter which version you got, you have to go print the rule book yourself. So they gave you the cards, but not the rules. Yeah. So I, Pandasaurus I'm has done a little bit. Pandasaurus. Of, uh, they are to me too. And, and I don't mean to go off on a tangent. If you just give me one second, but we got dinosaur Island raw and right. Okay. Yeah. It didn't come with pencils. Oh, you had funny. to get the Kickstarter oh. version. If yeah. you wanted the, I'm not kidding you. It's a roll yeah. and write game that didn't come with pencils or pens. Uh -huh nothing and i i literally emailed them i said what are you doing like that i i literally because the cutout is in my our box for pencils and there was none there so i thought okay okay right right what would you think you would think well, someone forgot to put pencils in my box yeah. i emailed them i was like hey i didn't get pencils in my box and they literally responded back it wasn't hey we'll send you some pencils you know okay we get it they literally said yeah it doesn't it doesn't come with the retail version and i, I just my jaw Brandon. dropped open I can picture Brandon for like minutes shaking the box, looking underneath the inserts, like, where are these damn pencils? Where's my pencils? I was looking yeah. in the rule book. I I'm thought maybe they wedged service. in the rule book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I'm just going to unback and just go buy a fox and name it Brandon. I, I think you're. <laughs> Hold I think on. That's, the, that's the ethical decision. Right? That is the right decision to make. I, I think it is. I'm sorry. On, I don't think based on everything I'm learning right now. It's just, wow. No. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. When I go through Kickstarters, you have to yeah, analyze right. it every little mm -hmm. aspect the shipping, everything. Yeah. And some of these games, I would back every single one of these if I went on my my response, like my gut instinct. Yeah. Like, oh, Luke, like the art is beautiful, but there's other so many other factors for me. You know, that's all. Yeah. I have no, to be picky. You, <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, you made some really good points here, though. Mm -hmm. I think it's just there's, <laughs> there's some really weird marketing decisions that are being made by this company yeah. that don't really align with what you would expect. 
What you? How did. do you sell a roll and write with no pencils? No, that's, <laughs> oh, they did. Was, you bought it. Or, I did. You, I fell for it. <laughs> how are you creating <laughs> functionality within a game like right. solo right. and then not include it yeah. in every version? Like that to me, that's just yeah. building a cash wall to block people out who are and to build this. FOMO that FOMO. if you don't back it on Kickstarter, you're going to be missing mm -hmm. critical things where it really should just be some upgrades, maybe some promo cards, maybe, but not a core function like solo. Like to me, that's, yeah. that's a really yeah. big. Yeah. Uh, and bring I, it back. Bring it back to Garfield. This is why Garfield is the best in the kickstarting space. You get no difference between Kickstarter and retail. They even tell you if you don't want to back it, it's fine. Just wait for retail because there's no yeah. difference. Yep. See, very few, should... very few companies do that. It's the way it should be. That's I agree. I um, <laughs> I'll be the. Uh, I agree with Brandon on a lot of points, and um, I'll be the unpopular voice in the Brady Bunch chat right now because <laughs> I think that um, I, in a lot of cases, I think that I actually like when, from a I don't know, from a philosophical standpoint, I like when you get perks for backing on Kickstarter that you don't get in retail. Now, I don't think something core component, like we were saying, like a solo mode mm -hmm. or something. Or pencils. I don't, or, or pencils, <laughs> yeah. which it looks like With they learned because they include the dry erase markers in the retail copy of this game. So. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I think that like a couple of perks and stuff for, you know, for Kickstarter backers makes sense. I actually don't sure. understand a lot of times, well, I should say it almost is more like a pre-order and not like an investment. And I think it's gotten us really looking at Kickstarter and crowdfunding in a very different way because yeah. it should be more like a shark tank kind of thing where we're like, I want to invest in this project. And for investing, I'm getting something else out of it that nobody else is going to get. Cause I put the money up and I did this, I but now we've got, we have companies that we're sitting around here going, we know this is going to come to retail. So the question is why the heck is it on Kickstarter? Why is it on game found, whatever. And the answer is because they want to pre-order and they've got reasons for doing that. But, um, but that's what it ends up being is it's like, let's call it what it is. Is this really a crowdfunding project or is this, let's see how many copies we need to print and get them all printed as cheap as we can, um, which is sort of the direction that our industry has taken crowdfunding. It right? has. <clears throat> which is a whole and separate Which I, I think is <laughs> fine as long as that's disclosed, right? Yep. This, this oh, is yeah. our goal. Yeah. This is how we're doing it. But it's not. It's always under, like, they're using it. False a, pretense. Th yeah. And, and, and that's the part that I think bugs me, Anthony, because uh, Francis talked about the marketing issues on this. I'm going to jump on this bandwagon, too. Yeah. The the stretch goals aspect that you described, mm -hmm. Brandon, like, uh, again, the, the, you're more experienced in the Kickstarter space than I am. At a certain point, they have to realize, yes, you can play these games, but you can't be this obvious, yeah. right? Like, yeah. then I then I get mad, right? Like, if you're going to be this obvious to say, <laughs> all right, at this point, we're going to give first player upgraded meeples, but but not second player, third player, fourth player. <sighs> like, and look point, at the I, and look at the money range that that ranged. Yeah, it ranged all the way up to almost two hundred. You're grand. not even trying. No, to, like, not even trying. Throw marketing tactics no. at me. Yeah. This right. is lazy. Yeah. It, Ten thousand dollars a meeple, guys. Yeah, I know. I think it costs more money for that guy to go huh. pull those pencils out of your box, Brandon, <laughs> than it did to actually make a second run without pencils. Like yeah. somebody oh, had to no. open the shrink, take it's the pencils out, re shrink forever. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so. yeah, it's like, but I, I do understand having that, that, that gimmick in order to sort of, and there are projects that do it well, that have stretch goals and do it well, and I've backed them. But like like you said, that when it's Kickstarter exclusive and it's a core component to the game, that's a no-no. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. is a problem. But no, I, I totally agree with, yeah. with all that. Yeah. I'm fine with, and you see a lot of this in the video game industry too, I'm fine with cosmetics, right? Cosmetic yeah. upgrades for, for, for getting in early access, right? Yeah. But, you know, because then there's the whole pay-to-win component, but it doesn't really translate. But it's kind of the same theory. I'm paying to get the stuff that you can't have, right? So it's... If it's if it's cosmetic, great. But if it's if it's core mechanics, then that's I forget it. That's but even if it's that. even if it's cosmetics, though, it's still trying to trigger the FOMO bone in all everyone. It yep. It's all it's all FOMO. What I'm, I was yeah. wondering too, I, going back to this whole like, why is there a retail version on here? And I'm wondering if because they haven't listed what the mm -hmm. shipping's going to be, depending on how many upgrades there are, because we're talking metal coins, we're talking about maybe heavier components. Will it cost more to ship the Kickstarter version potentially than it will to, to ship the retail and during pledge manager could people maybe back down to a cheaper shipping option of this game which might be the retail version as opposed to paying potentially a lot more shipping for yeah. uh, for the Kickstarter right. version maybe I don't know maybe 
but they don't even want to list shipping. So there, that's another big yeah. question mark. But yeah, it's, like, guess, it's like going out all... to eat, order right. a bunch of shrimp, and it says market price, and you're like, <laughs> come pucker yeah. up. Let's, let's see what happens. And, and that's it, Carlos. That is a great point. Has anyone yeah. ever? Have, have, you know what, waitress? Let me have the market price. Or have you said, hey, by the way, how much is that market price? I've never not asked about the market price, <laughs> whether I, I sound bring like it back a cheapskate or not. Yeah, that's why, that's why we're beans and nice. I always bring it back. Yeah. To food. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah. All right, look. All right, uh, so are we in, are we in or out yeah. on this one, everybody? Uh, I think right, I'll jump in with my final thoughts. I'll go first. Um, yeah, go ahead. Right off the bat, the nature <laughs> theme get, draws me in. Right. Uh, I know Gary, you talked about. Oh my God, lots of dice. It's such a mess. And then you said ten. Coming from a guy who played like Games Workshop, you know, 40k and stuff, I want to throw 30 dice. Like that's <laughs> that's where I'm. That's where my heart's at. So I, I love the idea of more dice, but not just because it's more dice, but because of the the mechanism behind it. That whole idea of as I start breeding the foxes, I'm getting more DNA type traits, and as I go down the line, I get more options because of what I bred. And that takes me to another positive point for the game: that linear strategy piece. Right. I like these games where what you did at the beginning will impact you later. It's not just a, a reset between rounds. Everything I did up front for deciding what traits to put on this one fox will be in the game at the end. Right. So someone will be using some decision that I made early in the game so we can give that linear story arc. Mm -hmm. So for, for all those reasons, uh, I'm, I'm in on this for retail when it hits retail. I'm, you know, yeah, yeah. When it comes to retail, even if it costs me another 20 bucks, and I don't have to risk the whole market price of shipping. I will wait for the retail to come out. But I think the, the biggest thing that came out of this whole thing was the visual picture I had of Gary and his family looking like the Starks and Winterfell <laughs> with their dire foxes, you know, going for carriage rides. Like, that's what I got out of this whole segment. So thank you, Gary. Yeah, no, no that's problem. awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, so, for me, yeah. Eugene, Vernon, and Clarence are coming home. Yeah, I'm going to bring them home. And it's a no. I I I I'll I'll probably still stick with the the backing. I, Brand, I'm right there with you. That's why I've stopped kickstarting just a lot of games. Uh, you just realize you could just get it later on. Uh, it takes a while to get through that FOMO, get over that. But it does. Um, but Gary yeah, also had like an adorable daughter looking up at him, going, "Daddy, please." I that want that you. was also <laughs> a major yeah. selling. Point. Those are factors. Yeah, yeah they those are. are factors. So yep. yep, I'm in. All right, Gary's in. Allie. Um, I'm probably in at retail on this one, to be honest, since the solo says it's in the retail box. I'll probably just wait. That was a and lie. See. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. But I have also noticed that a lot of times with the Pandasaurus games, you can get the Kickstarter versions in the secondhand market fairly easily most times. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely interested in the game. Yeah. For me, it's just kind of the, the wariness of the publisher that got the the license for it if it had been another publisher i may have been in at kickstarter or you know sooner well uh we'll keep an eye out for a copy in the board game nexus market Use the market. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. her games are up there that's right <laughs> yeah keep my eyes out and also i did enter the contest at the dice tower so who knows maybe i'll win a pledge oh there, there you, you go, go. <laughs> there you go uh brandon where were you at on this yeah it's a wait and see for me um you know it's it, Elizabeth has been with Stonemeyer. She's been with AEG, and I forget what who published Tussy Mussy, but button like shy. button shy games. So she's been with some good powerhouse publishers. I think this is probably the you know the least excited I am about her games coming out with Pandasaurus. But if it's a great game, then I'll probably pick it up at some point because you know I'll just wait and see. Yeah, wait and see. I will. Um... I think our camera died downstairs, which is what Anthony's doing right now. <laughs> I'll say I'm in it. Um, I'm in at retail on this one too. I think it looks really great. I definitely want to check it out. Um, it's a lot of pieces. I know there's like 136 tokens <laughs> for those trait tokens, um, but it definitely looks cool. I'm into genetics and all that kind of stuff. So I want to build some cool foxes and, um, but we will also probably pick it up at retail. I don't think there's one Panasaurus game we haven't been able to get <laughs> at retail. So, yeah. Hmm. So what did you um, say? You're in or out? I said I'm in at retail. I'll pick it up at retail. Yeah. I'm a hard pass. So, wow. Okay. No, <laughs> Why? Same, same, t tell me more. How out, of, out of principle. I just think there's a lot of questionable things here on this one. I, I don't, I don't like, I'm not a huge 
fan of kick, <laughs> Kickstarters to begin with. But I'm also, but when I see companies doing things that don't really line up for me, I have a problem with that. And I, and I'm not going to put my money to encourage that type of behavior. It's, it's, it's almost like deceiving, right? Because like but I do said, the, do the protest, uh, uh, back the $55 back, the $55, like, $55 <laughs> back really well, put not, your money where your mouth here, is. Well, here's the deal. Like if, if it's, if it's that good, once it comes out at, at launch, I'll see it in retail. You know, I'm not a FOMO player where I don't need all the the bling and all that stuff to, to, to come with the game. As long as the functionality is there, um, I, the fact that there's no shipping concerns me. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a gamble I will not take. Period. Um, the fact that there's that you're putting stretch goals in there that represent player one, player two, player three, and player four for me that's a huge red flag. I just think that's unethical to even do that. Wait, what's just, unethical? I missed it. To, to when you when you put stretch goals for. Player one, two, three, and four. Like, are you kidding me? Like, okay. You know, like, but you know they're going to pony up for that fourth one. They've and and like, the expansion like, is for five and six. He's got five and six coming. Yeah, so are those are going to be upgraded <laughs> or not. That's like saying, okay, player, the green player, the, those aren't going to be upgraded. But the red player and the blue player, those are. It's like, yeah. I can't get past that. To me, that's that, so weird. It, I didn't even see lines, that as you guys brought it up. None of it. So yeah, I didn't know that either until Brandon mentioned that. But none of that yeah. to me lines up. To me, that just sounds. It sounds lazy and deceitful because it's just throwing, it's just throwing stuff in the in that list to make people think that there's more to it the higher it goes and it's like are these really even you're not going to mention how they put the sticker on there solo included uh, please print and download your own yeah like that when I when I see that too that bothers me a whole lot because well, it's versus like Uluk I think it was Uluk actually said in the Kickstarter page like we don't have stretch goals because we've already made the game and this yep. is what you're getting yep. here yeah done you know what i mean and, so. and my final note with with so many companies going towards wooden meeples the fact that they're still doing plastic wow i will say one thing i wish they had done and i asked a question on the chat when i was watching the watching play it and they didn't get answered but is dual layered board with all those tokens it just i mean if you're gonna you know, if you're gonna put out some money, you should have dual layer boards. should be just standard. And I agree. I was, games. It can't I was be that surprised hard. when I was watching the playthrough because you have those fox cards, the pup cards that you're literally marking on with your, you know, dry erase marker. Mm-hmm. Why didn't they just make the player boards dry erase and you can just <laughs> literally mark <laughs> off as you filled in where the tokens are because they started running yeah. out of tokens and they were having oh, to wow. like figure out how many tokens they had. And so you can just really not print point. as many tokens yeah. and just make the boards dry erase and just, you know, exit off yeah. as you go up the path. But but I, but I couldn't make a stretch goal for for everyone. It's a stretch yeah. goal. Yeah. Plus yeah, they they couldn't, we don't they couldn't, couldn't meet this. They like, couldn't sell you, yeah. They couldn't seriously. sell you neoprene mm-hmm. mats if they had double layer player boards. Like That's they, couldn't, they couldn't have it. But, that, yeah. but those, are, those are the things that I question, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to print enough stuff for everybody, you know, like, why not just do that and raise the price? Like, give me everything I need to play this game with enough with the full player count, and not have to worry about everything else, and just raise the price yeah. of it. So, it, to me, it's just the whole thing just sounds off. So, there you go. Just like the quote from a famous movie, John Wick: "A pencil." A yeah. Pencil. <laughs> with a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and I want to know is if those dry erase markers even come in the retail edition of this game. I think somebody needs to ask the question. Well, I'll tell you right <laughs> now, whatever do. version you buy, they they're going to they purposely Francis pull them on there. Do you know I'll why that's it. in there? That's why that's in there because, because people don't Brandon. understand. It's because of me. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to buy the one for the fifth and sixth player. There that's you right. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that brings us to the top of the hour. I think we had a, a wonderful discussion. We covered a, a whole host of games. I think we. Um, yeah. This is to me. This is. I think this was a fantastic. Um, past two hour two hour session really yeah. um a, a great conversation and I, I can't i can't thank you all enough for joining us tonight yeah it was a lot of fun i really appreciate it yeah yeah this yeah. is totally yeah. fun thanks for having me i really do appreciate it yeah absolutely. all of you I, I i think francis and anthony we've met but brandon alley and and gary a pleasure meeting all y'all hang out and chat yeah, yeah it's a pleasure meeting you too carlos yeah yeah we'll yeah, definitely same. look to uh to do more of these and you know you were all you know, we definitely consider you all part of our our YouTube family. So, uh, you know, we definitely the invitation is always open for you to come back and, you know, we'll definitely keep this going. I think it's great. So awesome. I'll bring the pencils. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, We're making a T-shirt out of that. Yeah, have a good one. Right. Have a good one. Take care. See you. Bye.